Hey gamers, we're going to get into the, our second session of our Friday game group for my Mutants and Masterminds campaign for Days Long Gone. Hey gamers, welcome back to Game Master's Dungeon. I'm Brian, your Game Master. And today's uh, video is going to be the second session for our my Friday game group for my Mutants and Masterminds campaign. Um, we didn't do one the previous week, uh, just because scheduling issues, you know, with everybody, uh, doing life stuff, which is all good. Um, but this video is going to be a little bit longer, and this is going to try to catch everybody up um, in the story, you know, time frame, continuity, uh, to where Thursday's group is at. Uh, so hope you folks are going to enjoy watching this. So let's go ahead and get on into it. All right, so let's let's recap from the first game. What does everybody remember? Well, I do know that the the backstory about the super the, the what was it the super league the whatever I can't remember what the league was called. Um, know that, and then there was like the uh, from last session in particular, um, we were we encountered an entity on the TV that basically was talking about how we should super should rise up and take their places. <laughs> the uh, rightful leaders of mankind and then um the we got attacked by that giant ogre thing the rock golem and then we got the um task force uh I forget what they're called that came and um uh basically took care of that situation while we hightailed it out of there so we didn't get caught All right, yeah, that's that's pretty good. I think there's like I don't know. I think uh, I think Burning's got like some kind of confusion. <clears throat> pretty easy, he pretty easily beat that stone thing. I don't remember that. I gotta I gotta check my notes here. Yeah, that guy put the smack down on me. Oh yeah, you just went over there, psh, psh, slapped him around, and he was done. Yeah, the, uh, the SPD took him off. He needs yeah, like uh, special okay. special handcuffs. Fairly certain I remember burning being on his back for one turn, but I don't know. That was me was taking like... a nap after my light work. Gotcha, okay. I remember there was crying. Somebody was crying for their mom. I couldn't remember who it was. That was me. Oh, okay. That was probably Loki, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know. Well, okay, so let's get uh, let's get over here to this is where we end up because we went back to uh, so hey, it's my shop. Guy, yeah, so this is like your this is your sanctum. Uh, uh, the, the, okay. the, the the shop is like the shop is like outside. So yeah, we left off when you guys come into the shop. You know when it's got that. Yeah, it's got you got your there's like this. Um, very inconspicuous conspicuous it's actually like it's like carved into the floor because obviously you know the guy that had it beforehand you know this is something that he used regularly um you not so much because it's um some of its mysteries are beyond you but um then there's like also like wards and stuff like carved into the walls and stuff to prevent right like, yeah people scrying inside or teleporting inside or whatever um, you got all your bookcases down here. That's all your ancient tomes of knowledge. And you got like some desks over here with stuff. Another another bookcase next to it. And then next to it over here. There's another little desk. Get a TV on the wall. You know, I mean, you're not savages, right? We got TV and internet in here in the sanctum. Then there's like, you know, you have your little, your little, little rug, you know, for like meditation and stuff there. All right. Then basically, like, this, like where you like this is like the door. There's like this little rug in front of the door, you know. Okay, gotcha. Makes sense. Oh yeah, uh, powerpoints. So everybody gained five powerpoints. How do we mark that on our sheet? Well, let me open a sheet here. It's like underneath your uh, abilities. There's a box for starting powerpoints, and the next to that's powerpoints earned. Okay. You just like uh, tally that up as much as we got. Uh, okay. 
So do I need to actually add anything to the starting PowerPoints or no? Well, that's just 75 because we're started at power level five. Okay, gotcha. And then um, how I'm doing spinachers. So I'm gonna, I like, normally how I run it is that I run um, until I increase the net, increase the power level to the next level. So from like once we get to level six, then you can do all your spinachers because um, like everybody to do it all at once. Um, instead of like, people's like, oh, I need like seven points for this or whatever, da -da 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 -da. then you know, all the talk and stuff. So we're just going to stockpile till we get 15. I'll raise the power level. Then you can buy whatever you can with it. That's just how I'm going to have them running it. So Roger Dodger. <coughs> Sounds good. Affirmative. Um, and then, let me open this. Um, so then also like um, defenses and stuff. This is what I went over with the first group. I was going to go over with it last week, but since we didn't play it again, chance. Um, defenses and stuff are all rolled is how I play. So instead of it being like a static number, so like, you know, say you've got like a five in dodge. It's not a 15. Nope. You know, somebody shoots you with a gun or a beam. You They make your roll. You make your roll. I just like it all rolled. Some people like it static, but I like it rolled. So, if I if I if I ask you to make a roll, just roll it. <laughs> so it's like a contested roll then, and wh whoever gets a higher number wins. Yeah, then ties go to the defender. Okay, that's interesting. Because from what I remember, because that's how I played it back in like second edition. Because like I don't like. Like the idea of like defense is being static, you know, like your dodge is whatever. What what is your dodge? Your dodge is a plus four, so technically it would be like a fourteen. Are you always ready to dodge? Right. This, you know, if it's static, that means you're always able to defend yourself the same way every single time. I don't I don't like the way I don't like that. You know, sure maybe the guy's really powerful, but maybe you're just ready for the attack, and when you roll really well, you're able to get out of the way. Or if you roll poorly, maybe you just you got caught off guard or something. You know what I mean? That's how I rationalize it. <coughs> All right. Questions on that? No. I'm actually interested to see you try it out. And then obviously if you've got stuff like evasion, you know, if it adds like plus two to like, you know, area effect abilities... You know, if it's like, okay, make the dodge for the area effect, you get the plus two. Instead of it just, you know, increasing your static number, you get an extra plus two on top. So if something comes up that doesn't quite make sense, we'll just, we'll look at it. But I think from looking at everything, everything should just be. Well, I, I think for area effects, you roll your dodge anyways and just like uh, how it's written anyways, you know. Yeah, it just, um, somebody was asking in the first group about it, so I kind of had to, <clears throat> uh, you know, I just had to explain it, rationalize it, how I see it. That's just how I always did it when I started playing second edition. Yeah. So I was doing it in the first game, and one of the guys was like, wait, what? Okay, what's going on here? Who's who's moving their token? Do I need to take away control? <laughs> You're flipping your token around. But, you yeah. I will, I will say, after uh, running a few sessions myself on Roll20, I wish these sheets had a spot for, like, the, you know, the plus 10 you get on dodge and parry. Because there's no, there's no spot for it. So all the people I play with are always like, okay, wait, it's uh, it's plus 10, right? So that would be a third. And it just slows down combat a bit. when Because uh, I don't think these sheets are... Are very well done. Yeah, and I mean, like, I think even if you look at the the one that's in like the rule book, yeah, the one in the rule book doesn't either. It just has one square where you just put your your bonus. You're just supposed to assume that it's plus ten, <clears throat> but rolling is easy. I make my attack roll. I'm like, okay, roll your dodge or parry. Boom, you roll. I compare. Okay, on we go. Super easy. Do we still do toughness if you win the contest? 
you mean like okay, so say I say I shoot you, you fail a dodge, I hit you, yeah, then you do your toughness like normal. Okay. You know, basically, it's all going to run normal instead of it just being like I roll my attack and I compare it to your static dodge or parry or fortitude or will or whatever it is. Um, you just make the roll, then we compare those two numbers. So, so uh, here's the question. How, how, do you handle, how do you handle something like vulnerable, which is it's a half your active defenses so you just do like a one like if my if my dodge is six and i'm vulnerable i would then roll a 1d 20 plus three then yes okay yep i kind of answered myself as i was asking that i mean you know it's like you like you're maybe you're maybe you're vulnerable but if you roll well enough maybe there's just just that that split second you're able to you know regain enough whatever it is you need to get out of the way or to, to block the attack sure you still have the vulnerable status you know but next time you might roll poorly so it just adds a little bit of dynamic instead of it just being like okay my guy always my guy needs to roll a six or more to hit you guys okay he rolled a six a seven a 12 hit 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 this is a little more dynamic so what you're talking about Oh, so we're talking about so defenses, um, like active defenses, right? So even the word active defenses, when it's made a static number, still doesn't make any sense to me. So like dodge, parry, all that stuff, you're going to roll them instead of it being a static number. Instead of your dodge being 15 total, and I just have to roll 15 or more like armor class, um, I'm going to make my attack, and I tell you what to roll, and you roll dodge or parry or whatever it is. And then I just compare the numbers, and then we go on from there. All right. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So, let's pick up where we left off. So, um, you guys finished off the, the big golem monster. The SPD showed up. They took him into custody. Um, Mordecai brought you back to his, his bookshop. Um, so, like, yeah, you, you come in, right? You shut the door. You lock it. You pull the little shutter down over the window. You know, this this place smells of old, musty books and uh, like old, you know, like old dust and, you know, kind of like you think of like an old bookstore, you know, that smell that you get. That's what you smell. And it's, 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 you know, it's quiet. It's nice. It's like your wooden floors. It's like an older building. Um, it's It's two floors. There's like a main floor with like a desk that he sits at. You know, with his cash register upper level there's more books then there's like like a door that leads into like the back room like in in, in the back room area and then there's like another door that leads into this sanctum uh that you guys are led into which is what you see on your screens so you guys kind of come in and you can feel like in the air you can feel like energy you can feel power just kind of like humming it's not like what oh sorry go ahead I was just going to ask uh, Mordecai something. Yeah, but so it's not like it's not like super audible, but you could just feel it. You know, feel the energy in the air in this room. Um, then you you look around. It's I um, mean, it's not like it's not sparse. It's not cluttered. Um, lots of bookshelves. This is like old stuff. This is not stuff that would be downstairs for sale. There's tomes of different languages and um, things like that. <clears throat> he has several desks with papers and stuff all over it. Oh, also, there's if you look over here, right there, um, Mordecai. This is this is specifically for you as well. There's a crystal ball that sits that you have sitting on this desk, um, and this crystal ball is it's it's a uh, it's an item of intrigue that was never explained to you before the. Um, the previous owner your mentor passed away um it works when it wants to you don't quite sure how to just make it work um but sometimes it it shows you visions and images of the past the future uh the present things like that it's a wondrous device but if you could just make it work when you wanted it to it would be more useful gotcha. <laughs> And then yeah, that the thing in the circle—it's kind of like it's like engraved in the floor, and then it's like there's like some 
like red. It basically looks kind of like it is red, red and gold. Um, it's almost it's almost luminescent with with energy. Um, you can kind of that's one of the the things that's kind of emanating this this feeling of energy and power in the room. You look along the walls, like I said, there's like the the glyphs and everything that are kind of carved. Um, Mordecai, you know these are like these are like wards um, that are placed on the wall. You know, like I said, to prevent teleportation, scrying, um, summoning, all this other stuff within this particular room. Right. Yeah. And I, of course, relay that information to them about how this room um, is protected from prying eyes. All right. Um, I hope I'm going to, like, slip off my boxing gloves. Um, you notice that my, uh, like, mechanical arms, it's kind of like a frame over my normal human arms except for at my shoulders where it's like metal sheets and you could tell it's connected directly to my body by the scarring around it then i uh take off my gas mask and my helmet um you can see there's like a bald spot on top of my head with a with a scar and that the area around my eyes are black like they're permanently uh bruised and i say uh Ooh, it gets sweaty under that. So, uh, said you were making coffee. Um, Mordecai turns and he uh, looks looks you up and down and goes, "Looks like you could use a cup." Um, he lifts his finger and he etches some cuneiform into the air. And over by his desk, a uh, coffee pot starts to brew some uh, some black arabica beans. Nice. <clears throat> You guys wouldn't happen to know anything about uh, that guy who came over the the airway, did you? What guy? The guy who interrupted the news broadcast? Or the sports game or whatever we were watching? You didn't oh, see I, uh, I didn't see anything. Mm. I was out driving. Well, uh, it seems that it's quote-unquote time for supers to rise up oh so is that like what you guys are doing are you uh rising up now no no we right after that broadcast uh it seemed that that thing that golem creature um attacked us so um we naturally hopped in and unfortunately didn't save everybody but we tried our hardest yeah, there's no way that it's just a coincidence that those two are somehow linked together. Yeah, that's too bad. perfectly timed. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, uh, speaking of I'm which, gonna... uh, does that TV work over there, Mordecai? Uh, yes, yes, it does. He flicks his fingers and again etches some cuneiform into the air, and it uh, you notice that the TV remote flicks and it uh, comes on. I'm going to say, uh, you know, put it to the local news or whatever. There may be some kind of update on, on what just happened. Or okay. if there's any other at attacks like that one. Uh, much the same. He does the, the things again and it switches over. So you see the, so the, you know, the TV, you know, comes to life and you you it flicks through several channels until you get to like you know the big news station the news channel um and it the, it, it describes uh it's right now the the lady on there is like you know, is showing like aerial views of your incident with the big with the big golem um because they use drones and other stuff instead of helicopters nowadays um but yeah they, they had drones flying overhead to have like long distance cameras you know obviously you know this from just watching news normally uh but yeah it shows like it shows like a top-down view of your fight this big golem or whatever and you guys fighting it and all the the devastation and all the destruction um they don't have any idea who the uh who the big golem guy was you know it shows you know then how the spd show up and together you and them take this guy down um the new guys kind of run off and this says oh you know there, there was this there was a group of individuals that assisted the SPD in 
taking down this, you know, th this large golem, this th this menace to the town uh, that was, you know, causing destruction. And several people have been killed. You know, the one guy that got crushed by the car and other things like that. Um, they don't know anything about you guys. Um they they do ask you know that if anybody knows anything you know to to call into the news network and let them know. Um, it does talk about other incidents that happened as well. Um, they were not available for questions. Yes. <laughs> no, we should have stuck around. We could have been on TV. <laughs> You're like yeah, he just thumbs up, you know, eh, big gleaming smile, wing. Hey guys, and then then you just get black bagged by the SPD and just hauled off to the middle of nowhere. Um, but it does, I much it does prefer talk that about... way. <laughs> I get black bagged. <laughs> All right. No, I can make that uh, not appearing on TV. And <laughs> at least they said, "Oh, they helped us." They don't. Look... It's not like we are outlaws or anything. Or we are. Well, well, that's just what the news people are saying. And also, they're playing it off as not like it's not like they showed up and helped you. No, you helped them. You guys are like, what? I don't remember it like that. Yeah, we were there first. No, 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 that's not how it went down. Uh, I think they did more, most of the damage to it, to be fair. I don't know. We, I think we held our own fairly well. It was all you guys. Yeah. They just showed up and st stole your glory. <clears throat> the news then also, then it goes to like the next incident. It talks about there was uh, an incident at the, the large mall um, downtown. Where there was uh, two two similar individuals, you know, came into the, like their their like the food court area and they began attacking people. Yeah, they didn't oh, nice. didn't show me getting body you know, getting body slammed by the giant. Yeah, unfortunately, they edit that out. Of course, it just it, it's it's all the glory shots, you know, the good the good shots, the good sides of you guys, at least for now. Um, then it also talks about there was another group of individuals that assisted um, in taking down those people as well. Uh, but they also were not available for questions. <coughs> um, let's see, let's think about the time. So your incident there. So I'm just, I'm trying to keep continuity as close as I can. So, I think, okay. And then it does talk about a couple of other incidents around the town as well, where um, random supers like show up and start doing um, damage to buildings or they start causing fires they're just causing all kinds of like anarchy and the, the spd is uh, you know their different units are sent out th all throughout the town to to kind of deal with these incidents um they also mentioned that they haven't seen anything like this in you know 20 plus years this this much random violence in such a small amount of time since you know um before the before the change, you know, before the schism and all that stuff, and just shows like shots of all of these other um, incidents. Like there was another one where there was, um, let's see, I had, I had to thought out here. So you guys had the golem guy, the other group they dealt with the fire and the other lady. Oh yeah, there was um, there was this this guy that could control like lightning and electricity, like like. Part of the power grid is taken taken down on one side of the city, and repair crews are out trying to fix it, and things like that. So just like as you're watching it for like probably 20, 30 minutes or whatever, they're talking about all these incidents. It was just a lot of like random incidents, all kind of at the same time. Shortly after that, um, that broadcast by the unknown individual. What the hell? <clears throat> Surely you don't feel like those are coincidences. I haven't seen this much super activity since since Stardust. This is uh everything just went to shit all at once. This is probably a sign of uh what we we should expect things to come. I don't think this is just a a lone incident. There there's going to be more of this. There's trouble brewing. Yeah, I feel it. Speaking of brewing, then I uh, walk over and I pour myself a cup of coffee. And then I uh, I guess I sit down in one of the, one of these chairs over here. 
I'm going to pull out my phone and I'm going to go on social media. I'm going to like see what everyone's saying about all these super powered people popping up. And I'm going to just check out the times that all of these things are getting mentioned to see if everything really is like happening at once, you know? Mm-hmm. <coughs> so I'm in this chair. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Gonna move yourselves around. Uh, giant trending no, game. sorry, oh. John, you're not <laughs> trending on Twitter yet. Sorry, so you're checking social media. What is everybody else doing? So I am currently looking, seeing if I could see anything in my crystal ball. Like you're like, hmm, this is you know, this is a strange time. It's got to be doing something. You go over and you peer into it. Exactly. It's, it's nothing. You're like tap on it a little bit. Nothing. Of all the times for this thing to not work. But try unplugging it and plugging it back in. I shoot you a glance and I knock the coffee cup in your hand. Hey. Loki, what are you doing? You're here, right? I think he disconnected. No. Oh, he's DC. All right. Well, I will move him. He's gonna he's gonna come over here and sit down. There we go. I want to ask Mordecai how he uh, how how did you come across a place like this? Do you own this place? Or... Indeed. Um. So, well, I don't suppose any of you know. Of a character known as the Vanished, huh? Nope. Yeah, I thought not. I kept it that way for a reason. Uh, it was a small town. Uh, just started out as a uh, before the schism happened. Yeah, uh, moved here, trying to, you know, be anonymous, go under the radar. That's when uh, I found this place and started working there for. Uh, it was owned by an old man. Found out that he also had a knack for the mystic arts. When he passed, he willed it to me, and I've been here ever since. It's a nice little inheritance. It's a nice, nice store. Yeah, it's great. It has everything I need to practice. You see Loki, he's over here looking at some of the tomes on this, this shelf over here. And look just kind of like wow like you know. He's kind of like taken yeah. in by all the, the ancient knowledge. You can even, yeah, you can even see my eye glowing like like I want, I'm using my power, like, oh man, this is amazing. You need to teach me some some stuff like this. Mordecai, come on, man. If the knack for it, I might be able to teach you a few. Got to start with the basics. You know? I mean, he has to be able to read ancient Babylonian. That's uh, that's the basic of basics. Well, I know ancient Egyptian. I think that help, maybe help a little bit, right? Yeah, I hear the same language, basically. Babylonian's a bit older. Sorry. Nah, no problem. I can learn. I can learn it. No, no, no problem. You wouldn't happen to have any kind of like a scrying spell or a foresight kind of spell? Well, I can I can see um, probably about uh, hold on I can see for about uh, sixteen miles around. So so how does that work? Do you do you have to have seen the the object before or? Well, I just open my awareness and I follow follow where it leads. So you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna look anywhere in particular. You just want to see where you can see. Not quite <coughs> sure what I'm looking for yet. He hasn't told me what I'm looking for. Oh, okay. You saw the man on the on the news broadcast, right? Ah, indeed. Clever, clever. I like it. Um. 
hold on. Give me a second. He uh, he he kind of sketches some cuny form into the air, and uh, he, uh, you see his eyes kind of go white as um, he starts stretching out his awareness. Um, and he's looking looking for that past figure. Okay, so you kind of just kind of go into a trance, and your 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 vision it's just vision, right? Or do you have uh, the auditory? No, about? it's just vision. Just vision. Okay. So it just like your vision kind of goes off into the into the ether. You know, you just feel like you're like you're going out. So like your the wards and stuff allow you to scry out, but it prevents people from scrying in. Just so you're aware. So you're like, oh, do I have to go outside for this? No, you can look out and do stuff. You know, going out of the room, but it prevents stuff from coming in. Gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> so your your vision kind of wanders through the ether for a while and then it eventually focuses in on um it's, it's like a it's like a building it looks kind of like a like a warehouse and you're you kind of go in like you zoom in through the roof and you kind of go into a room <coughs> and you see this individual standing there arms crossed in front of it there's um it's got a bunch of lackeys running around a bunch of these soldiers that are dressed like in like in black kind of like, kind of like how the SPD how their armor looks. These guys are a little more um, a little more militaristic, um, like dark armor, like black and grays. Um, they're kind of running around, moving stuff around, loading stuff into trucks. <coughs> yes. Yes, obviously, I, yeah. I know it's six, within 16 miles. Obviously, if it was further than that, he wouldn't be able to see it. No. So, and then, yeah, so you, you see it, like, into this room, and there's, like, there's another person in there with him, like, this this big, like, muscle-bound, weightlifter-looking guy. You know, he's just, like, ripped. He's, like, you know, kind of dark skin, black hair. He's got a mustache. Looks like he's kind of, like, barking orders at some of these guys. You can just tell by his gestures, and they're kind of moving stuff around, loading stuff into these these trucks. Um, these trucks look just like regular, like, delivery trucks. Um, very unassuming. No markings, things like that on them. <coughs> okay. Um do I uh, do they notice me? Do they can they sense me or not yet? Um, not that you can tell. Okay, I'm gonna look around and see if I can see any uh, like license plate numbers or anything like that on the uh, vehicles. Uh, yeah, you can kind of like you you kind of go down. You can you can see the license plate numbers on on the two trucks. Okay. Obviously, I just I'm not going to read them off. You just you just have the numbers if you need them. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I uh kind of break my trance and look at the other guys. I'm like, well, I can see him. Uh, he's in a warehouse. Uh, he's surrounded by a whole, whole bunch of uh, soldiers. It looks like. Uh, there's one man in particular who seems to be very strong. Um, seems to be his uh, either second in command or can't quite tell. Did you get a like an address or a location for this warehouse? Do you know where it is? Well, I know it's within 16 miles. Um, did I happen to get an address? <laughs> um, you you'd have to consult a map. Okay, gotcha. Do we uh, should have an atlas somewhere? I'd think, but I don't I know. Yeah, I have a map yeah, app on my phone. Yeah, I mean, most most of you guys also have phones as well. Just Google Maps, Google, <laughs> Google Earth, always taking pics. Gotcha. All right. So yeah, so you're able to um, you can get an atlas or use your phone. You're able to see that this is a warehouse that's probably about ten miles away in like an industrial area of town. Um, this warehouse is, is like attached to like another like a production facility where they produce like um, technical parts for like different kind of machines and devices and things like that. 
Oh, yeah, okay. I could use more parts. So, uh, question. Is this reminiscent mm-hmm. of the, um, the warehouse that, uh, that went down with, um, uh, was it, was it the warehouse that happened that, uh, the final showdown with Stardust was, or? Yeah. Um, no, this is not, this is not reminiscent of that. Okay. So it's not the same place. Okay. Gotcha. <clears throat> Uh, Brody, <coughs> was I able yeah. to determine um, that all these super-powered uh, schmucks popped up all at once right after the broadcast? Uh, let's see. Do you have do you have, uh, do you have investigation? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe maybe an investigation roll, and we'll see what you come up with. Ho. Oh. All right. So yeah, so you're able to piece through several uh, multimedia feeds, social media, and all this other stuff that um, you 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 get the time of the of the the um, the news broadcast or like the broadcast from this you know this unknown individual, um, and then within an hour of that time is when most of these incidents begin. Some begin like like it happens, and then blam, um, these things happen, and it's like shortly after shortly after no but all of them begin within about an hour oh well this was a this was definitely a planned maneuver guys military style strike yeah i'd, I'd imagine yeah and uh this is like all over the city too right yeah it's in downtown it's in you know the north part of the city. You know everywhere stuff is just kind of springing up. Some you know some things are not like as big as like what you guys dealt with, um, but some stuff is even bigger than that. Um, there's just just a hodgepodge. Remember, there's anything you could think of that would be happening uh, with people deciding to just kind of finally come out of the shadows and just kind of fling powers around for a little bit probably happened. Remember the city is huge. It's like it's like 150 percent. Of the size of Los Angeles, right? So fifty percent bigger. It's huge, you know, millions and millions and millions of people here. But there's like nothing else really happening outside of the city, though, is there? Um, no, well, I mean, in do you check? Like, yeah, I, w- just... I would have checked. Like, okay, well, make may, may, make one more to see. Like, you're looking at um, statewide, nationwide. See what you can kind of come up with. Eleven. So what you gather from it is that most of it's just um, inside the city, inside Alpha City. Um, even if you look at like um, anybody that you know that lives out of state, um, nobody's talking about anything weird like that. I wonder why this city in particular. Well, remember, this is where. Stardust and the Quantum Force had that showdown with Thrash. Um, I'm assuming you were alive for that, yes? Yeah, but like... Still. Hmm. How, how old are you? I'm 24. Mm, okay, so you were young when it happened. Yeah, you know, I was just a kid. Still, just to uh, attack a city just because um, there was a fi- big fight here one time. I don't know. I feel like you need more of a motivation to organize something as big as this. I mean, you do remember what happened, right? You Do you remember Stardust carrying that boy's body? I, I remember that to this day. I remember where I was, I was standing in my store, watching the happen to flick on the TV, and sure enough, there she is, weeping over that boy's body. It's haunting. Nope. Yeah. I guess we're not going to figure anything else out sitting around, guys. I yeah, I think. Pull on my mask. I think John over there has a pretty good suggestion. Why don't we go see what's up, what's going on over there? Hey, uh, Brian. 
Yeah. When the guy came on the TV and obviously all his facial features and everything was covered, did mm-hmm. it sound like he was using like a voice mod or was that just like sounded like his actual voice? Um, you're not really quite sure because it's like a helmet that he's wearing. So you're it, it sounds very um, um, machined, you know, but he's probably using some kind of voice modulator on the inside of the mask or inside of the helmet to change the voice. So that could have been, for, for all I know, a, a female in there. I mean, it could have been. A female who used to be called Stardust. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if your theory crafting has gone that far, it could well be. Who is now angry. Everyone has turned it back on her. And is back for vengeance. Meta... I mean, that's going to be sessions down the road before we find out who or what is underneath that helmet. <laughs> I can't believe Brian has to rewrite everything. Because uh, Dax just blew out his plot twist. Yep, I'm like, well, shit, delete that. Okay, it's now an alien from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, I, I agree with you, Mordecai. We should uh, yeah. we should definitely. I, I don't think we'll get anything done just just hiding in your uh, lovely place here. Uh, thank yeah. you. It is well, quite lovely. But so, what do we want to do? We want to trail him, like uh, or? Well, uh, I don't think it's too good of an idea to just trail one of the vans. We don't know what's in there, and we can only really trail four at a time at most we don't know what they could be delivering it could be another, right. another organized attack four. if we try to trail all four that splits us up i think our best asset is to stick together right now we might want to go to the warehouse figure out what they're shipping out first and then make a decision yeah i think either way it, it begins with us going to the warehouse All points, all signs lead to that. Uh, all right. Is that what we want to do? Is it a nighttime out or like what time of day is it? Yeah, it's, it's nighttime. Like you guys got your incident took place around. Um, I'd have to go back and look. I forget exactly what time. But it was kind of getting toward dusk when the TV broadcast happened. Then there's the whole incident. Dealing with that, getting back to where you're at, the time you spent here. It's probably going like 8 o'clock or something like that. Well, it's better to go now than at uh, 8 in the morning, so. Yeah, and Mordecai, you got a thermos for the rest of that coffee? Yeah, kind of looks and goes, I uh, might be able to find something. Uh, goes off to the kitchen and finds what looks to be like a, a thermos from the 1980s. Uh, this old guy had everything, I think. You know, the old green one with the big metal cap and the exactly, handle on it? Exactly, exactly. As long as it's clean, keeps it hot. Let's hit the road, team. All right, let's go. You wouldn't happen to have a uh, a vehicle here, would you, Mordecai? Uh, well, you know, I don't really have to walk around. Hmm. Do I have a vehicle? <laughs> um. Do you? Did you buy one? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I wouldn't need one because I kind of walk around everywhere, but uh, I don't know if the old man willed me any vehicles. Let's see. Let me just roll my let me just roll my dice here. Okay. Uh, odd or even? Even. And then um, greater or less than uh, 50? Greater. No, you do. There's no car. Well, yeah, okay. no, I don't remember seeing one in the will, so I'm assuming no. You could take like one person on my motorcycle. I mean, unless you want to go wolf, man. Would... You're, you're, you're a little faster like that, aren't you? I, mean, I, I actually would imagine Mordecai knew, I don't know, a teleportation spell or something. 
would just be very risky to uh, do such things out, out in the public eye like that. Speaking of my werewolf form, not so much. I don't know anything about his hocus pocus teleporty stuff. So. And talking about public eye, you know, it's not like my power is that easy to hide because every time I use it, my eye glows, you know, like I start glowing. It's not that it's not going to be uh, easy to do this at night. No, we got to do something. Do you have any uh, teleport cards up your sleeve, magician? No, unfortunately, that uh, power was a bit advanced for me. I guess we're, uh, I guess we're hoofing it then. Is that good with you, Mordecai? Yeah, I'll get there when I get there. You want to uh, stay kind of in my area, within eyesight of each other, in case uh, something happens? Right. Yeah, I'll yeah. stick to the same rooftops. No. Uh... I'll stay underneath you guys. I won't get too far ahead. I guess let's right. roll out. Then. Let's Transform go. Transform and robot roll out. So you guys are all ready. You're like, yeah, all right, team. Here, here we go. Let's do this. The doorbell rings. Oh, pizza's here. I didn't order any pizza. Not my house. Uh, let's, uh... Let's take a look. I walk over to the blinds and kind of peer out over the thing. What do I see? You see that there's uh, like the SPD are out in the streets going door to door. Uh oh. Okay. Well, I guess. Uh, I guess let me go into the door. What do you think? What do you think, John? We're on the second story right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is there a way out of this room that's not... Like, is there a window to go out of or anything? Technically, no. This is There's no windows, actually, in this room. Um, Are there any windows on, on the second story? Yeah, like in the other room. Like the room that you... That attaches to this room that leads out into the actual... Like the bookstore itself. There's a couple of windows in there, uh, but this this room is meant to be completely isolated as it is. Now, back on on my very brief time on the SPD, would I remember maybe like a, how aggressive they would be when they're trying to like question people or knock on doors? Um, they're 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 relatively aggressive. Um, it's it's going to be questions all like. You know, they don't even introduce themselves. They're like, we're looking for so-and-so. They look like such-and-such. Such. Have you seen any individuals like this? Um, sometimes they'll ask to come indoors to look around. They feel that maybe they've, they try to uh, <clears throat> come up with a bluff or something. Maybe they've snuck into the house or something um, just to look around. If they believe that maybe the individual or individuals they're looking for are in the house. <coughs> I'm going to tell John that um, it, would, it would be really risky to answer that door because even the slightest hint of anything and they will uh, pretty much force their way in here. And if they see what you've got going on in this room, then um, it, it won't be good. How do you know this? I read about it online you seem more certain than that I'll leave it at that for now but one day you're going to have to tell me what you know the doorbell rings again I don't think we have anything to hide we're just four dudes having a night in you know I glance at the uh, arcane symbols along the wall and on the floor right nothing to hide huh it's an everyday house, right? That's how I decorate my house. I'm gonna ask Dax for a. Is there like a way out, a back door, a window? We need. We need to get out of here. 
do, is there a back door window or anything like that? Or yeah, is it so only... like when you when you go back to the first floor, there's like a little there's like a little side room off on the first floor that's got like a like a back entrance leads to an alleyway. How long does it take you to do that wandering eye thing you did earlier? Mm, not too long. Is it quick enough to maybe scope out the building, make sure there's no one in that back alleyway? Maybe they got the building surrounded? Uh, I think you guys can let, let that work for me. Uh, I, I I don't know if you guys, if I uh, tell, told you, but my eye can see anything, almost. <laughs> so basically I can see through, uh, through walls and stuff. All right, well, be my guest. Do you see anything out there? Let me try and do something. So my eye starts to glow, and I try to see beyond the walls of the building. Use my penetrating vision. Oh, okay. yeah. So, yeah, so, so you kind of, like, your your vision kind of, like, broadens, and you're able to kind of, you know, basically zoom zoom out you know see through walls and stuff it looks so like when you look around the alleyway is the you know, alleyway is clear um it just looks like there's there's guys out in the street there's there's two guys at the door um then there's like four or five other guys at several other <clears throat> um houses or shops along the street as well um ringing doorbells so I tell them exactly that. Looks like mostly it's mostly clear, with some of them asking people uh, uh, in their doors and in shops and, and and stuff. Um. Well, I left my bike parked in the street, so we should. I think we should get rid of this guy. All right. Uh, I'll take it that you'll you're taking your leave then. For, uh, there, John. I. I'm gonna get a head start on the warehouse. I, I can't chance it. I'll meet you guys there. Hey. Uh, you wanna give me your cell phone number real quick? Oh, uh, sure. It's a. Uh, 666 Wolf. All right, cool. I'll text you mine. Ding. There you got a text from me. All right, I'm going to look for the some kind of window or like a back door to go out of and then kind of sneak my way out of this. Start heading to the warehouse we agreed on. Okay, so you 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 leave the the little the sanctum room you're in. You go out into the the little ante room there. That's got um, it. Just basically looks like a little kind of living area. There there is a medium sized window, like a standard window size, um, that you can open and you can get out. It actually looks down toward the alleyway. And is there anyone out here? Uh, no, the alleyway is clear. I'm just going to start booking it in the direction of the warehouse. Okay. You go out in wolf form or human form? Uh, for now, human form until I get a few blocks away. Okay. So you climb out the window and you kind of like dangle, then you you drop down into the alleyway. You look around. And then you, you go down the alley and then you go out on the, the opposing street. So there's like... Like the street that's parallel with the alley is where the SPD guys are. You go down the alley, like heading north, goes into the, the cross street there, and you're able to make a right just onto the <clears throat> onto the street, acting casual, you know. Uh, was I able to see a bunch of uh, like the SPD cars or trucks or any of them like uh no because the alley so the alleyway is like parallel to the other to the street that they're on so there's like buildings and stuff all in the way but when you got out to this the street running um east and west you don't see any of them out in the street you just see regular traffic okay i'm, I'm gonna go into the next alley and then uh 
you know, look around, make sure there's seemingly no eyes on me, mm -hmm. and then uh, transform, climb the building up to the roof, and then start going uh, full speed across the rooftops. Okay. Meanwhile, the three of you guys. Uh, hey, I'm on. Do you uh, see anything up on the roof or anything over it? Uh, let me check. And so I look at the roof. Oh yeah. yeah. So you yeah you don't see anything on the roof. It's just a regular roof. You know, it's got the like the steeple type. The, it's got the really the really steep angled roof. Uh, it's all clear. Would it would it look like hard to stand up on it? Um, I mean, it's you know, think about those really steep um, roofs. I mean, you could. Probably, like, if you had something to be able to, to grip, but to just stand up on it, no, it's too steep. All right, well, I suppose I'm going to go answer the door. Hope I don't get jumped because of you guys. <clears throat> eh, it's just one guy. Worst comes to worst, we could take him. All right. Uh, so I go over to answer the door. Okay. So you go out of the sanctum, down the stairs, down to the main floor, to the door. And uh, the doorbell is rung several other times. Just so you get there and you peek through the blind or whatever. You know, you see the guy kind of standing there. You just open the door. And there's there's the one SPD officer standing there at the door. Then there's a guy like down the steps on the sidewalk, kind of standing there with him. You know, you know, they have that very kind of like, you know, raspy voice talking through their, their helmets or whatever. They're like, good evening, citizen. We're looking for several individuals. They give you a description. Basically, they, they, they describe uh, <laughs> a werewolf. You know, there's a, a guy that looks like Punch Drunk. Um, there's a guy, they describe a guy that looks similar to Amon. Then they describe a guy that looks kind of like you. Uh, no, no, don't know any of them. Uh, I don't reckon they're around, around these parts. Let's see here. Hey, hey, hey I'm on. I hope you're uh, watching through the floor what's going on right now. All right, it's going to be our Dax. is going to need some deception. You said deception, right? Yep. What is that? So yeah, so you, you say it pretty much just like you say it. The guy, he pauses for a moment. Or I can't really tell because he's kind of standing there like motionless looking at you. You think he is, you know, for, through the mask. He's like, are you sure, citizen? And he describes the individuals one more time. You haven't seen... Anyone like this around these parts? Think to myself and say, uh, <coughs> it's coming back to me. I did see someone the other day. Uh, you've, um, you know, and he's kind of a handsome young man, but he was uh, walking down the street, uh, had some crazy looking hair, um, and the glowing eye, I think. A little weird, but I thought maybe it was some sort of, you know, cosplay. I think that's what it's called, right? Cosplay? He stands there for a moment. You think he's, like, you're assuming he's looking at you. Um, he's like, this would be neat. This would be this, this evening, within the last hour or so. Oh, no, no, no. Then it wasn't. It can't be the guys you're describing then. All right, deception. Oh, no. How do you even worse? What the heck? You want to perhaps use your hero points to reroll that? <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to use that. <laughs> Good luck. You can't get anything lower than a 10 if you use your hero point. So wait, what? Uh, well, you rolled a five, 
so that means you rolled a 15 instead because if you use your hero point to re-roll something and it's less than 10, you add 10 to it. Well, 10 or less. So that would be a 15 plus whatever your modifier is. Wait, not a 15. What's your modifier? My modifier for is a uh, six. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it would be 15 plus six instead. So 21. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so the guy's like, like he looks at his friend. Thank you for your time, citizen. Have a good night. Turns around, walks down the stairs. As you shut the door, you're like almost sweating. You're like, Phew. <laughs> you're like, why was that so stressful? Almost blew that. All right, so Amon, are you are you still watching from upstairs? I saw everything. Everything. So well, the question is, are you still watching now? N- uh, probably. Yeah. You need to. So you see, oh. like, so the oh, the guy see. goes down the stairs, and he meets with his other friend or whatever. He gives like some hand signals. They go, they go to the other group of guys, and they they kind of talk, and then like just like the six of them then begin to walk back to the house. Oh no. Oh boy. Yeah, You're I rolled on me uh, back. I rolled. It's it's right here on the screen. People that are watching, it's right there. I I rolled a twenty plus the modifier for their um, insight. So, like you almost had it, but I got <laughs> what is what is that? Man, you needed to say I, I was like a cosplayer. It's, they got it because of that. Obviously, they got it because of that. Baby, come back. So, uh, so Amon, are you uh, are you telling us that they're uh, coming back yeah, they, to the house? Yeah. So they they two go to the so front. Right. The couple go into the alleyway, and then two go on the other side of the house. I'm gonna send uh, send Frostfang a text. You're like, hey, should uh, you should come back for a minute? Things are. Things are going to get hairy, but I put hairy in quotes because I'm making like a like a dog joke since, you know, he's a wolf. So but question, yeah. Bigson, where does all your stuff go when you turn into a, a werewolf? <laughs> I don't think it's really explained uh, like in game or give me any options, but... Um... If you're familiar with how it works in like D and D, I was just going to imagine that it, I just transform and like my equipment kind of just like uh, goes like, inside of me. I guess is how it's described. And then uh, whenever I, I morph back, it reappears, or, or however that works. Uh, sure. Yeah, we'll do that. That's fine. So oh. you're you're doing your stuff on the roof, and you hear like your text message note going off. You're like. And like you feel the vibrating, you're like, uh, like you stop on this on this roof. Well, there's probably like two or three people with my number, uh, punch drunk being one of them. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm definitely going to to check it and then see what's going on. Okay, so you turn back into your human form, yep. and then. Uh, yeah. Get in your pocket there. In my pocket, check the text. Uh, face palm at the hairy joke, and then uh, you know tap type back in uh, on my way, and then I'll shift back and start heading the way I came from. All right, Mordecai. So what do you do once you shut the door? What do you do? I uh, immediately rush back up to the sanctum of. Uh, <laughs> see what's going on with these guys make sure that they're okay all right so you go rushing into the door you shut the door behind you these guys are looking a little pale well i got my mask on 
Touché. I'm I'm ready to go. Nope, I guess it's out the back window, guys. Uh, okay. Um, let's see if we can make it. Uh, I'm on. What do you see? So I see six guys. Two of them are in the back alley. Some of them are in the front of the house, and I don't know. And I see Victor in the roof, basically. There's someone on the roof. No, there's, there's, no, yeah, there's no, nobody on no the roof. One's no one's <laughs> Yeah, so there's two in the front, two in the alleyway. Then, like, like between, like, the two houses, you know, there's, like, the, or, like, the two buildings or whatever. It's not really, like, an yeah. alleyway. It's kind of, like, a shared little space, you know. They're kind of coming in through there. Basically, they're surrounding the house. Well, it looks like they're surrounding the house, according to what Amon says. I don't know if we could make it through that window and uh, jump down. There'd be two of them there, according to the intel we just got. <laughs> well, I could jump pretty high. So, think... from from the back of the house, to be able to jump over it, hop on my bike, and I'm strong enough to carry him on with me. Uh, I guess we could split up for now. Okay. Um, I guess. Uh, well, I mean, why? Did, well, I guess why are we splitting up if we just uh, texted uh, John there to come back? Well, we need another distraction. I'll give you a wink. You can't really yeah, tell because my mask options, is on. Well, I would say my our best option would be to actually go to the roof and try to go from roof to roof, so they don't get a clear vision of us. Clear, uh, clear side on this. Uh, about your bike. The roof. Well, at, at least from to another roof, then we can maybe get get them our from our tail uh, there. I don't know. The only problem would be our bike. I think we would need to left it behind. Yeah, that's. I'm not gonna do that. Hmm. So there's uh, so punch drunk. You you get a text. Oh boy. Oh. Uh, if you if you're reading the reading the the chat yeah. here in roll twenty. Yeah, John. Uh, John suggesting you take your crystal ball with you, Mordecai, in case the uh, SPD break it. Nope. Confiscate it. Uh, I really don't want to give up my sanctum. Okay, um, I'll grab my ball and reluctantly acquiesce to your requests. Mm, I think I will. Uh, if you don't mind me doing so, Mordecai, I think I would like to get some books so I can study and, I don't know, maybe. Learn a thing or two. Guys, we uh we should get moving. Like now. Alright, well let's 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 go in. Uh out the back window. I'll fly Sorry. up the roofs. Sorry, I'm on. I think we're gonna have to leave the books. No, not the books. Oh man. Alright. So what's the plan? Run me through it. Well, I'm not going to leave my motorcycle, so I'm going to jump over the house and try to ride off on it. Um, but I'm Amon doesn't want to do that, so I don't know what he wants to do. You don't, Amon, what do you want to do? Well, uh, I think we don't have a choice. <laughs> so I think the be our best option would be, uh, let me see... Maybe Mordecai and Victor trying to make some uh, diversion and, and get your attention. Then you would carry me and go to your motorcycle. And after that, we would ride off and they would try to follow us. That, I think that's the better, the, the better course of action here. here. 
Oh, right. A distraction. Yeah. I could like throw down a smoke bomb so those guys waiting in the back can't see anything. Oh, yeah. I forgot you could do that. Yeah, me too. All right. Let's go, team. All right, let's go. All right. I'm going to fly up to the rooftops then. Oh, hold on. Let me throw out the smoke bomb first. So I get up to the back window. Um, can I, like, hear where the two guys in the back are with my uh, Echo helmet? Uh, yeah, you can. They're kind of they're kind of taking a position there, like they're like checking their weapons. All right, uh, I'm gonna lob it out, guys. As soon as it hits the ground, we're out the window. Ready? So I'm on. Get ready to jump in my arms. I, 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 I piggyback him like not that again. I'm not going to be the damsel in distress again. Understand? Oh, come on, it's cute. Whatever. And I throw the smoke bomb out the window. Okay, one, one sec. Did that work? <clears throat> uh... Let's see. One more second. Uh... <clears throat> All right, wait for him. Make sure he gets this and reads it. Dax, did you get that? I did, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Obviously, there would be defenses in place, um, so you know, you know how to do that. But like I said, you don't know how to reopen it. It's something that you haven't uh, you haven't learned yet. Okay. Is there a place for me to learn that knowledge somewhere else? It's uh, it's in one of the books. That you would have here. Do I know which book? Let's see. Um, roll investigation, right quick. What is it with these crappy rolls? <laughs> it's gonna be one of these games. Um, uh, uh, just a little sec. Would I be able to help him by looking through the pages of the books? Like, I see through the capes and try to search whatever he wants to find. Uh, well, they're yeah. all, so all the books are written in a language you don't understand? Well, he can write for me in a little sheet. I don't know. I like, I, I start searching. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that work. So basically, Dax, you get to the point where there's there's three books that you think it's in, uh, but you don't know exactly which one it is. And these are like not like pocket sized in the you know you would need like a bag or something to carry these. Okay, uh, I guess you need me on mo. <clears throat> uh, I'll take number three. Number three. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, you just like. You grab this book off the shelf. It's like a big. Thing. It's almost like a like encyclopedia, you know, Britannica sized hunk of novel. Um, you grab it and you just tuck it under your arm. All right. All right. So I so grab this book and I fly out and I look down and I see. Are you guys out of the building yet? Okay. So let's so then we rewind time real, real quick. Okay. So then, uh, punch drink. You throw the smoke bomb out the window. Yeah. Okay, so you like you throw it, it obscures the two guys on the ground. They start yelling. 
Okay. And then what do you do after you throw the smoke bomb? Uh, well, I leap out. And then once I hit the ground, I jump over the building to get right, to the so other side where my motorcycle is. Yeah. So you land in the alleyway because that's the way the window faces. So you land in the alley. These guys can't see you. You turn and you're like, whoosh, you jump whoosh, over into the front. So you land like behind the two guys that are like getting ready to breach the door. So you come over, you just like, you land like 15 feet away from these guys where your motorcycle's parked. Yeah. And they, they turn, they look, they're like, what? There's one up now. I'm on, distract them. Although I, I'm, I am totally stuck to his back, like, oh, it's already finished with my eyes closed. Like, man, it, it, we've escaped. Are they still after us? I don't know. Come on, distract them. Yeah, he's kind of like, he's kind of like, he doesn't know what's going on. So you land, you look, they yell, you're like, uh, distract them. So you start running towards your motorcycle. Come on, Amon, distract them like you did the rock monster. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. You, you bunch of, with the, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You, you bunch of idiots. You, you won't be able to. Uh, okay, I <laughs> don't make him I, more I, mad. <laughs> okay, uh, I totally missed my my the joke here. <laughs> and actually, that's my distraction. I made a joke so bad that it was like they they, they were like, "What the heck?" And they missed the time to get uh, to go after us. <laughs> okay, where's the... roll that then? Roll the roll your bad joke skill. Let's see this. I, I think that it would, uh, yeah, you, you need to roll for me. Uh, I'm not uh, at home. Uh, okay. Um, it's deception. We'll roll deception. Godspeed, Brian. All right. Not bad. Okay. I rolled you 16. So oh, you, you, oh <laughs> boy. You throw out some, some lame joke. And they're like, let's see. Let me roll their. Yeah, they're not having it. Um, they're like, what? What did he say? Shoot him! Dang it. No. It, it, it wasn't supposed to shoot us. No. So they like, so they like raise their guns and they, they, they each fire a shot before, a shot at you uh, before you guys, before you're able to get on the bike. So, so are you like, is, is, so Aman, are you like on his back? Like, you know, like a child way? Are you being like princess carried? Like, how's this, how's this look here? I'm on his back. Because, okay. again, I don't want to be the, the damsel, man. I'm a freaking pharaoh. I, I'm a, a pharaoh. I'm a king. I'm a god king. I shouldn't be carried like that. I need, okay. to, I, I need to be respected. All right. So each of you make a dodge. Just one. Uh, do oh, the honors for me, yeah, please, oh, yeah. Brian. Yep, I got you. Yep, just one, one Thanks, each. Bro. Oh, nice. How, how does it roll that low? I don't even understand. Oh, I'm uh, yeah. going to re-roll that one with my hero point. Okay. How much did I, did I roll? You, you rolled a nine. So... Uh, All right, okay, so it's so a seven, gonna... uh, 17 seven. instead. Okay, so you both are hit. Uh, um, oh. <clears throat> All right, so then uh, toughness tests. I'll roll yours, Loki. Godspeed. Oh, nice. Oh, boy, please. <laughs> Random gods, please help me. Oh, well, fantastic. All right, you guys both were rolled well. So, Punch, you get a 22. Loki, I rolled you a 21. So you, you both take the shots, but they're like grazing shots. So they like like go through your, your coat and just like singe the top of your shoulder. And then punch, you get one like kind of like in the leg. It just goes like through your pant leg and it kind of goes right across the top of the skin. Doesn't sweat do any damage pants. though. You, you, yeah, your sweatpants. No, they are now air conditioned. So then you're able to like get on the bike and you get it started. You know, smoke. 
everything billowing out the back whoo, as you go down the street. All right, Mordecai. So these guys do their thing. Tell me what you're doing. Okay, so as I as the smoke bomb went off, I take one look at my book and I kind of ju judge whether or not I can make that uh, the lookout. And I etch some symbols in cuneiform um, and I start levitating. And I go out the window and kind of take a look back at the uh, at the the building and I kind of drag a long line with my two fingers and then I drag a couple more I etch like some cuneiform into the air and as I do um it looks like a bright light starts to emanate from the building um and it uh like it looks like um cuneiform is just building up as like a wall around the building and then I start floating up towards the top of the roof to the building uh, next to me so yeah, then the guys in the alleyway, they're still obscured by the smoke ball, so they don't see you. So you're just going to go, you float across, you just turn, you do your thing, then you turn, you float across to the other other building and land on the opposing building for a second to get your bearings. Right, exactly. Okay. Did you take the crystal ball or no? Yes, I did. You said the ball and a book. All right, fantastic. All right, Frostfang, so you 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 get back within within range you see this light emanating from the building. It's kind of like enveloping the building. You hear gunshots and you hear like a the a, a sound of a motorcycle like squealing off down the street. Now, since I'm also on the rooftop, would I have seen um, Mordecai flying on the rooftop and then land somewhere? Yep. You see him, he kind of goes up, then he lands in the building like right next to his, to his building. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go straight <laughs> to him then. Okay, so you hop over there, so Mordecai, when you land, you're like, you're taking a moment, you're like, <laughs> my sanctum, you uh, miss it. And then, like, Frostfang lands next to you. Mordecai, what the hell's going on? Well, I'm hoping I have the book I need to unlock my sanctum. I just used the spell that uh, it's the strongest ward I know. Uh, but <laughs> the only problem is I'm not quite sure I know the counter spell. I, mean, I wasn't asking about the bright light. So I was asking about the... Oh, yeah. Well, those two decided to try and jump over my uh, my uh, bookshop and get to his bike. So I just kind of was... I flew up here. I don't know what they're doing. Well, uh, tell me about it later. Let's, let's go. All right. Are we still heading to the warehouse? Is that the plan? Anywhere but yeah. here. All right. Let's go. All right, so Frostfang, Mordecai, you guys go from, you know, you kind of float, you kind of jump from building to building. The two of you guys on the bike, we're gonna, how do you uh, how do you decide to get to the warehouse? Um, <laughs> no, I'm going to keep riding the bike there. <coughs> but not pull up, like, all the way to the warehouse. I'm going to park it, like, a couple blocks away. Uh, no, nah, I might need to peel out. Hmm. Can I like find a good spot near the warehouse to park it? It's like oh uh, yeah, yeah you can find a decent spot. Let's see. Um... <laughs> okay, I'm just thinking there's a uh... yeah you'll find a decent spot to hide it. Nice. Kind of out of the way. <clears throat> can't get you like you can't guarantee that nobody's gonna come up come across it but it's pretty out of the yeah. way somebody would have to kind of, kind of like kind of go way out of the way and take it so uh, it takes you guys probably about i don't know half an hour 45 minutes to kind of re-get your bearings and to get to where you need to go making sure you're not followed um, but you are not you're not surprised you surprisingly you're not followed you guys made a clean getaway um what I uh, what I think that's weird that um, twice in the row the SPD didn't seem to really put up much of a chase for us mm. because when we took down the rock guy they kind of just let us get away too. Uh, you can make an insight. 
You can roll insight to see what you make of it. Nice roll. Yeah. Um. I mean, you don't know. You don't know tons about their tactics, but um, you've made two clean getaways in the same night. That's just kind of like, hmm, kind of yeah. scratching around in the head there. Hmm. And let's see. We close this. Okay. All right. So then you guys get to the get to the first warehouse, or the, sorry, the warehouse that you saw in Mordecai's vision. You guys are all kind of like outside. There's like it's like a, surrounded by like a big big chain link fence and it's got video cameras and things like that because it's attached to like a larger like i said like a larger like construction type building where they create all these parts like a big factory they create different parts for different kind of machines um and then they store these in this big warehouse um then they get shipped out <coughs> you didn't, i mean when you get there you don't see a whole lot of action going on it's not like there's alarms raised police aren't here that kind of stuff Is it, is there a fence around it or yeah it's got like a you know like the big chain link fence barbed wire on the top cameras mounted on posts and uh i'm on can you uh see inside the warehouse okay let's try to scry something and i start explaining my vision and trying to see through the wall Okay, so you activate your, your power and you're able to look. So you're on like the south side of the building. Um, so you look into the immediate um, wall. You you just see like there's like shelves with crates and just like a regular warehouse would look. Um, and then like you're able to look a little further. It looks like there, there was like, um, you see like a guy laying like face down on the ground. Just kind of like looks, you know, you can't really tell his condition, but he's just kind of like face down. Looks like he's wearing like a like a security guard kind of outfit. Can you repeat that last part, please? Yeah, so you see a guy laying on the ground, like face down. Looks like he was like a security guard. He's wearing like a uniform. Um, you can't tell his condition, but he's just laying on the floor face down in the middle of the warehouse okay so guys um pretty clear pretty clear but there is one guy face down the floor and he looks like to be a guard of here but i don't know if he's if he's ha harmed or just taking a nap are there no vans or an army of people loading them like in well, more so <laughs> So he was so. So how far can you see with this? Well, I can see as far as my normal vision could see, but unobstructed. Basically, so. If so I'm you're not, able. If I'm, if I'm okay, so wrong, you're able to. Oh, go ahead. Oh, see, see. Oh, okay. So you're able to see then past that. <clears throat> so it goes because this is like the storeroom. Then there's like a like a loading dock. You're able to see like through that next wall. You can see into the loading dock. There's no more no more trucks there. Um, you see a couple more people look uh, like they're incapacitated, lay, laying on the floor. A couple more security guards, uh, but there's nobody left in here. Uh, so that uh, I see some more people dead but no more trucks no more vans nothing just <sighs> ko'd per people great we missed them all right what do you what do you think guys um might as well snoop around see what we can find what do you, what do you guys reckon yeah. Yeah, let's go in and check it out. Um see uh see how the knocked out guards are doing. Stay frosty. <coughs> uh sorry I just got back. So real quick, what 
what did you guys find out at the warehouse? It's uh, abandoned, except for some guards that have been, we think, knocked out. Yeah, we should uh, definitely investigate that. Then. Oh, okay. and, uh, and Ed made a frosty joke, you know, because you are frost wolf. So, frosty, speak frosty. Uh, no, I didn't even realize I made that. But I'm still going to uh, take credit for it. It was about as uh, good as your hairy joke, so. Thanks. All right, so how do you guys plan to gain entrance into the warehouse? Well, I'm just going to walk straight through the friends. Okay. So I'm going to <laughs> jump over the fence. Yeah, can someone carry me, please? <laughs> I guess Amon's getting back on my back. What? Got to do the princess style, man. He doesn't like no, it. No, princess style, no. <laughs> I can even play some some sappy music for you too, you know. Come on, come on, Loki. You got the sappy music for it and everything. I got it. I got it ready, man. Just for just for this game. No, actually, I did not. Uh, okay. Only uh, I would do it, but I would ask uh, for a hero point in, in return. <laughs> <laughs> oh, steep price. No, it's okay. You can yeah. Buy this back. No, just joking. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. Dance some style. <laughs> So you guys jump over the fence, face through the fence. So you guys get in. There's like a, then it's, it's like probably thirty feet from the fence to the to the building. Um, the side facing you just has like a like a back entrance into the warehouse. It looks like there's this is like maybe where employees or something go for like breaks. There's like a couple of like picnic table looking things. There's like a you know one of those smoking buckets or whatever that's out there. So you guys approach the door. Um, yeah, there's security cameras, but I mean, I'm personally not worrying about them. Anyways, the door, uh, so look, trapped them on. Oh, trapped. I don't, yeah, I, don't know. I, I don't know if I can find them, find find a, a trap or anything. Just, Maybe just look and see it. if there's an anvil over it on the yeah. other side. Okay. Yeah, or a piano or something. <laughs> a piano. Yeah. yeah, so you look through the door and there's nothing on the other side. It looks like it's like a, this looks like a break room here. <coughs> a couple of tables, refrigerator, that kind of stuff. I guess I'm opening the door then. Okay. It's surprisingly unlocked. Nice. So you open the doors, one of those big metal handles. Swing it in. All right. You guys all go in, shut the door. The lights are on in here. The uh, there's like a little beep sound coming from the microwave, like when you like when you cook something and it's you leave it in there and it just makes a little noise to remind you it's going off. Someone's food is ready. I mean, I got to open the door, so if someone else wants to open the microwave. Okay, I um, <clears throat> I look over and I uh, edge some cutie form into the air, and the the microwave door swings open. And there's uh, one of those big cups of like top ramen in there. <clears throat> That's mine. <laughs> I uh, bring it over and start eating it. <laughs> so, uh, so Mordecai, you're like a germaphobe or something. You won't touch anything. Well, I mean, if I don't have to, might as well. I'm gonna just shrug. I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna follow John and check up the bodies. And I like get on my first aid kit. Okay. So then there's a, there's another door here that leads out into like the warehouse proper. So you guys open that door when you go out there. Um, lights are on in here. It's pretty quiet. You don't really hear anything. You don't hear like machines running or forklifts or anything. <clears throat> you guys look around for probably a couple of minutes till you find the one guy you that Amon first saw that's laying face down, like in the middle of a kind of like an open area. You just face down. Is he dead? Uh, do you have treatment? Can I do have that? treatment. Roll that. 
Uh, can I like just do a routine check, like a take ten? Yeah, sure. You know, checking the pulse or whatever. Yeah. So like just okay. the straight seventeen. Okay. So yeah, um, he's he's still alive. It looks like he's um, taking the blow to the head, but it's not fatal, or at least. Like you're not a doctor, you don't know. There could be some damage afterwards, but he's not dead. Hmm. Uh. I mean, I guess I'll treat him then. What is this guy wearing? Did he look like he worked here, or is there any? Kind yeah, of he's wearing where this guy might have came from. So this guy's wearing like a like a security guard uniform. It's like a like a white shirt black pants he's got like a you know his his duty belt his flashlight radio he's got his um pepper spray all that other stuff they're not armed though he didn't have a gun well, i'm gonna i'm gonna take care of his injuries to uh make sure he doesn't die then okay so this will need a treatment check this isn't routine especially dealing with a head injury <clears throat> All right. Well, so you you take a bandage and you wrap it around his head. <laughs> that should be fine. You're like you stand up. Ha! Fantastic. Like you've seen it done in movies. So was there any others besides this uh, one guy, or was this it? Yeah, there were two other guys on the loading dock. That's on the other side of the building from where you're at. Okay, I'm gonna kind of creep my way towards. Uh the loading dock not just walking out in the middle of the room or anything but uh okay. roll some stealth okay so he goes prowling off that direction you guys follow uh, also while, while i'm going can i maybe look for uh, like a the foreman's office or like a administrator office um are you, are you doing this like while I wrap up the guy's head, or are you going to wait for me to finish first? I probably would not wait and wait for you to finish. All right. All right, so while you're wrapping his head, you go creeping off. You um, you kind of wander around a little bit. You do find there's like, a, there's like an office area that's got like you know one of those windows that look out into the into the warehouse. The door is this this door to it though is just open. Let me take a little peeky through the window first before I go in the door. Okay, so you look around. It's like a desk. There's a couple of chairs in there, computer, um, filing cabinets, the, the usual stuff that you would find in an office like that at a warehouse. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna make a mental note of where this is and then keep heading towards the. Uh, where the two other guys are okay all right so while you're you find that check that you end up finished patching up this guy's head um where do you guys go after that um i'd want to check on the other two knocked out guys what's uh mordecai what are you up to well right now i'm just finishing up my cup ramen with these uh, chopsticks um but i guess i'll come help you uh patch up those guys Oh boy. I'm assuming Amon, you're leading the way because you were able to see through the warehouse. You know exactly where they are. Uh, he uh, dropped out of voice. Yeah. Oh, he did? His phone might have died. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'll just I'll run him until he's able to get back on. So, yeah. So, he, you know, he, he's going to lead the way. He's like, oh, it's over this way. <laughs> he takes you the most direct route to get there. Um, you guys kind of show up about the same time to the loading dock area. Um, it's like a, it's like a like the like the big sets of doors, like swinging doors, because like you know vehicles and stuff like forklifts and other stuff have to come in and out of there. So, the, but these doors are like swung shut. You can see the lights are on in the loading dock because you can see light coming through. Uh, which doors are, are uh, shut? So these are the doors that are leading directly to the loading dock. They're like those big, like swinging doors that you just kind of like push. Or that you well, can like, like like the cars would go through. Well, the, no, not like the cars, but like a forklift or pallet jacks or okay. basically, yeah. So this is like 
this is the door that would lead from where they would take the stuff in the warehouse, like the crates and boxes. Then they would take them to the dock through these doors to load them onto the truck, van, whatever it is. Okay. So who wants to open this one? We all get to take turns opening the opening the doors. I just no. open the door then. Okay. <laughs> You just like you just they they just swing open, you know. You swing, you can see the loading dock. All the trucks are gone. You see the two guards. One's like leaning up against the wall, like in a seated position. Then the other guy's like face down, about ten feet away from him, like on the opposing side of the dock. Well, uh, does anyone have like some sort of tracking power? Uh, I have, but it's quite specific. I can visually track energy, if like magic, if I'm not mis mistaken. I don't know. I, I need. Wait, wait. Let, let me check here. What uh, what specifically are you looking for? Well, I was thinking someone should uh, we could like get started on tracking where the vans went. Well, we uh, patch up these two security guards because I kind of want to wrap up this investigation fast so I could call an ambulance for these people and we could get out of here. No, no I don't really have anything like that. Uh, oh. Well, John says he could track by smell. Um, so, I mean, yeah, so if you want to, all I've got is tracked by smell, I think, so I, I think, yeah, I think I can track too, but I, I don't remember how I. Well, let's see, I got your character sheet here. Let's look. <clears throat> oh, got powers. I think I get visual tracking or something. I don't know. Yeah, you do. Have, yeah, you have visual tracking. Uh, oh yeah, so I would imagine something like the ego vision from Assassin's Creed. I kind of see uh, some type of uh, mystical energy, life energy, tr energy track, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, like a shadow of their presence in the place. Uh, hey Brian, how long did it take me to like hit, uh, patch up that guy? Oh, I mean, basically all you did was just kind of like wrap his head, stop any bleeding. It took, I don't know, three or four minutes. No, I'm just kind of thinking. So I want to like do this fast. Uh, does anyone else have investigate? Do we have investigate? Yeah, does anyone, does anyone else have it? it? Yeah, I'm pretty good at investigation. I'm uh, decently at investigation. All right, so we'll have Amon <coughs> get on the get on the trails then. Uh, me, me, and John, we could try to search for other clues. And uh, Mordecai, we'd be fine with uh, patching up the suit guys on your own. Yeah, that's fine. All right. And then once we wrap that all up, I'll call an ambulance and we could get out of here. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Yeah, let's go with it. Okay. All right. All right so let's do. So first, let's do Mordecai, do your treatment. We'll need two rolls, one for each guy. Uh, they're all. Both of these guys are also not dead. They've all, they've taken some damage. They're in, they're unconscious, but they're not dead. Um, so this is probably going to take you a total of I don't know, maybe ten minutes between the two guys. You know, for checking to make sure they're okay, seeing what their injuries are, patching up with what you've got, and then you guys are going to do investigations, looking for what specifically are you looking for? Uh, just kind of see if we can find any other clues around. You know. Yeah, I want to go back in that admin's office and look around. Any, any documents maybe left out on the on the desk or any recent file on the computer? 
or if there's any kind of like uh, CCTV feed uh, that maybe I could rewind real, real quick and see what happened. Okay. Now I'm going to so search this area. Okay, so for us, you're going to head back to the, the admin office. So roll me an investigation here um, for checking the dock area. Is that me or a punch drunk? Punch drunk. Oh, okay. Yeah, whoever's checking the dock. And then Frostfang, you're going to roll one when you get back to the admin office. Uh, 25. Okay. You can go ahead and roll now. Yeah, get the rolls out of the way. Okay. Nice. All right. So 25. Um, <clears throat> you do see that there's like um, part of a crate. It's kind of been discarded. Not like on the top of the dock, but down like where the vehicles would park, you know, because there's like that drop off vehicles back in. Right. There's a part of a crate that's down there. Um, doesn't really have any information on it. It's like it's like one of those big wooden crates that there would be some kind of something in. You're not quite sure what it is. Um, but whatever it is, they broke they broke into the crate and tore off part of the lid. It looks like part of the lid. It's been discarded. You don't really find much of anything else. Hmm. And then in the admin office, so 18. So you're able to find, um, so you look at the CCTV feed. Looks like it's been disabled because um, all the cameras are black. You roll back about 30 minutes ago, maybe an hour. Um, they just kind of go, they all just kind of go out at the same time. So you're assuming that that's about when these individuals um, came in here. And then you're able to find, like if you, um, on the desk, there's like some some papers regarding um, like inventory of what's in here. Um, a lot of it's stuff that you don't understand. You're like, oh, this is you know, whatever kind of futuristic piece of a machine would be called. You find a bunch of references to stuff like that. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, nothing really I can uh, wrap my head around. I mean, do you have technology? Uh, I mean, I have it due to my base intelligence, but I don't have any ranks of specific technology. But... Yeah, I think because I think technology has to be you have to have ranks in it. Can't use it untrained. <laughs> but like to find out specifically what this like to know what these parts would do. You would need ranks in it because um, some of it's just like you're like wow this sounds like something super cool for all you know it's you know it's some kind of part of a toaster for all you know but there's there's quite the there, there, it does look like the um the desk has been kind of rummaged before you got in here um and this is the kind of stuff that was being looked at was like inventory is this where the uh, cctvs are um yeah they're in they're in this in this room as well just like another like, like the second desk with like some monitors on it can i try to like uh, maybe quickly track uh where like the the i assume that it's like being recorded to a tape or something of like the outside cameras um it's not recorded to tape it's all digital um but like i said so when you when you try to try to go back on any of the cameras um, they've been, they're still out and they've been out for probably about an hour. Um, when you get back to the part where the feed is like live, where you can see stuff looks like to be normal. Okay. Never mind them. You also do see like on these inventory sheets, it's got like container numbers that you can gather. Container number six, seven, four, two, four is this six, seven, four, two, three, this so on and so forth and you're you look you look through the papers and you you see like everything is kind of chronological up to a point where there's like probably two sheets missing out of like this you know the chronological order as you put them back in order of like container number uh you so you said there's two like entries missing or numbers missing? well two like two pages of entries so you so say maybe there's 20 container numbers per sheet you know, you get up to da 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 whatever number, and then the next page that you can find on the desk in chronological order 
is probably missing 40. So you're assuming there's like two pages of this inventory log that's been taken or that is at least missing. Does it, can I get an idea of like uh, where the ones closest to the thing that are missing, like maybe like a destination? Oh, you mean like where they're supposed to be going? Yeah. Uh, that's that's not this kind of document. This is just kind of like this this container number holds this part, and then this is where it's located in the warehouse. This isn't like a there has, there, there's no kind of like shipping or transportation information on these pages. Okay, sorry. Well, found this bit of crate. Um, not much I could tell from it now, except that they broke into one of the crates here. Uh, if I could get it to a lab, maybe I could see if there's any material left on it. They could tell us what they had in there, but we'd just be better off following the cars and you know, looking inside of them. How are your two guys doing? The two security guards. M Mordecai. So they seem to be pretty well healed. Um, I got them stabilized for the most part. Um, so it looks like uh, they're good to go. All right. <laughs> See if John found anything, and then we'll get a move on. Yeah, I'm going to come back out and uh, kind of just said there's a – couldn't really understand uh, what I was looking at, a bunch of data entry. Um, I, I The only thing I was able to pick up, up was that uh, there are two, two entries or two crates uh, that are missing from the, from the logs. And, well, it's uh, not okay. So it's not two, two crates. So like I said, so each each page of that has twenty entries, which would be twenty oh, crates. Okay, okay, okay. So there's there's two whole pages that have probably between ten and twenty individual crate information on it. So there's quite a lot of stuff there that could. I'm assuming whatever was in that section that they took, those crates are something of importance. Now, did they take them all? That you don't know. Okay, sorry. I thought you said two crates, but you said two pages. Uh, could I have just taken that log with me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm just going to show it to everyone else. Good. But uh, there, there's some torn pages in here that, that obviously had a, a, some importance to them. Is, uh, is this what he couldn't tell because he didn't have technology? Yeah, like like he like you like he's reading the line of like you know some kind of you know I don't even know what kind of technological lingo to use, but this think futuristic stuff like parts of parts of other thing like you put these parts together and it forms something else, which then go with something else to create something else. Um, I have technology. Okay, you roll. It. Good luck. All right, so you're looking at this manifest, and you're and you're able to kind of you got a general idea of what a lot of this stuff is used for. There's you uh, you stuff. cut out a bit for me. What'd you say? Okay, so all right, can you hear me well enough now? Yeah, you're good. Okay, let me adjust. Make sure this is on and good here. Okay, so you're able to look through this um, this book. You know, it's like a, one of the big binders. You know, they hole punch, put the page in there or whatever. You're able to look through this, and you know most of this stuff. Um, it's used for all kinds of uh, different technological devices. There's like stuff for like uh, medical machines. There's stuff for you know refrigerators. There's stuff for these cars. All kinds of stuff. Um, but without really knowing, because without really knowing what is missing, um, the, the the two pages that are missing. Because as you're looking, right, you're looking at chronological order. It starts with container number one, container number two, three, four. Tells what's in the container and where the lo like the basically like the location in the warehouse of where this container is located. Um, the two pages that are missing, um, you have you really no idea what they really could be in there because it's not like this is all medicinal equipment then the next few pages is all this it's kind of just everything kind of stuff come like these crates come in these people number them and then they put them where they need to go 
Mm. Yeah, it's no real pattern here. Just kind of a shipping warehouse. Can't really tell at all what they will, could have taken. Hmm. Nope. This is nothing left to do but track the vans. Okay. So then, Amon, you're able to use your visual tracking ability, and you're able to kind of see like the trail, like you how you described it, kind of like the uh, you know the bird's eye view of you know from like Assassin's Creed or whatever it is. And you can you you can see like the guys get in the vans, the vans drive away, they go out on the street, and they're heading south. He uh, signed off again. He did. Yeah, he was here, and then he just signed off as you were saying that. Well, that's what he sees, and that's what he describes to you. Right. So he's so so yeah. So he he says that he's he's got them located. He knows like where they're heading. They're heading that's, south. On they all went the same direction. Yeah, all the trucks are going in the the trucks are going in the same direction. Oh, that's convenient for us. All right. Is there anything else you guys want to do here before I call an ambulance? No, nope, sounds about it. All right. I would think we're done here. I'm going to make a call. I'm going to tell them that there are three injured people and in what rooms of this uh, warehouse they are. <clears throat> okay. Then you guys make a hasty retreat. Yep. Okay. All right. So then, so you guys that are able to move relatively freely, so Mordecai, Frostfang, um, how are you guys going to follow the follow the truck? Because you don't you don't have the the tracking. Amon does. You going to wait for him on the on the motorbike, and you guys kind of follow, or how you want to do it? Probably just uh, follow where he leads. Okay. Sound good to everybody? Yeah. Pretty much, okay. yeah. We're kind of limited when he's not here. You know, he's typing. Yep. Let's see what he's got to say. So I'm assuming you're letting him ride on the bike and he just kind of tells you where to go. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so you guys I could make him what? just walk and I could follow up my bike. Just like, just, just put slowly. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. No, no, he's going right on it. I mean, if you wanted to get there before the world ends, I mean, yeah. All right. So you guys, you guys go back to your bike. You get it out of your little hiding spot. You get back out on the street. You meet up with the group. And so they go off on the bike, and you guys follow the best you can. You're not going, like, crazy fast, right, because the other group not as fast as your motorbike. Yeah. Plus, you don't want to get pulled over and, you know, cause a scene. Yeah, that's what I said before. Right? Yeah, okay. No so way. you follow them. You're gone follow them through the... Never mind. Oh, yeah, I, I might have been. When I had to use the restroom, but I'm mean, yeah, that's why I'm, I was assuming that you would do that because yeah. the last thing you need is to be like a street chase from the police and the SPD. <clears throat> so, but you you guys are able to follow follow his directions through the city for probably about I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Um, it goes to another area of town, um, another like industrial area. Looks like another, almost like another warehouse. Um, kind of similar to what you were at recently, but this is like owned by a different company. Um, I didn't really come up with the company, but you know that these guys make um, scientific equipment that uses, they, they, use, they create parts to build like machines for different kind of um, different sciences, like seismology, um, like geology, like digging equipment, all this other kind of stuff. 
Oh, Dax is typing. See what he's got to say here. Never mind. Don't worry about it. No. Oh, okay. So Amon is able to lead you to um, another warehouse. That he's like, okay, the trucks are in there. He know he can see the trucks are inside that building, and he can see there's people in there. Can he see what they're doing? Yes. So he can see. There's actually. So he sees the person from the uh, from the television broadcast is in there. Um, then they have several like lackeys, you know, goons, the soldier guys with them that are loading. Um, they only have three crates that they're loading onto this last truck. And then you see like the like the big. Uh, he also the he just didn't he describe like the big muscular guy that he saw or that Mordecai saw from before in his vision or his scrying. Uh, how big is he? I mean, he's not like huge. He's like you know normal size. He's just like he's just like solid muscle. Like he's, you know. Like been working out for fifty years. Uh, so not like ten feet tall. Yeah, he's not like he's not ten feet tall, but uh hey Amon, can you see inside the crates from here? Okay, let me check. So uh can I see something? Anything? Yeah, you can see there's like just like mechanical parts in there you describe them there's like looks like it's it could be like digging equipment there's like different rods and gears and just all kinds of random stuff not good so basically it's a it's a bunch of random parts i can't make what what's their purpose but it's basically that what just random parts yeah Probably they they are, are going to be used to machine names to dig or I don't know. I just yeah. hope they are trying to I don't know um, awaken some type of ancient evil or something. Yeah, he just starts to go off, you know, on this on this tangent about ancient evils and stuff. He so he, he doesn't have any ranks of technology, so he's not really quite sure what he's looking at. Um, then just like this moment where you guys are all just kind of standing there looking at each other. Or, you know, someone could have just dropped their phone down a drain and they need to dig up the sidewalk to get it out. It's probably just that. That's what the gophers are for, you know, those things, you know, so you can pick up cans and stuff. Yeah, but it's not as fun as a drill. Oh, yeah, I guess tear it up the sidewalk. But yeah, so basically he describes just a bunch of random parts. He can't really make heads or tails out of it. Um, but even with your knowledge of technology, there's hundreds of things that could be built um, with the parts that he's able to describe. Okay, so it's just like really like basic equipment that's in like everything. Yeah, All it's right. basically like you're assuming that they're going to use it to build some kind of machine to do something, but you don't know what. They're gonna, you're gonna use their things to do something. Nice. They're gonna build the world's the world's largest dance dance revolution pad. Uh, oh man, that would that would be nice. <laughs> so I'm on how, uh, how exactly how many people are in are in there? He sees. Hold on. Let me look. Six. Uh, including, okay, the, uh, including the TV guy and the big guy. I was going to say. Yep, the six total. Those guys love to walk on six, man. Groups of six. Oh, man. It's a nice maybe even it's number. A, yeah, or maybe they work for the beast. You know, six, 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 the number of the beast. Oh, man. I remember that's all, all that can fit in the vehicles. Yeah, see, with all the stuff. Uh, yeah, or that lame, lame reason. I still think it's about the beast, but okay. Maybe. So what do you think, guys? How do you think we should uh, go in there and annoy them?
Mordecai, John, you guys have like a preference on how we jump in? Well, I uh, I know that he's probably going to be. Would he? Do you think he would know about us attacking that uh, other super? You talking about the rock man? The rock man, yeah, the golems. Uh, if he's seen the news or looked at his phone since then, probably, since we were all over it. He probably won't be too happy to see us then, even if we are supers. Hmm. Well, we don't know what this guy's powers are, so I don't know. Well, do we want to ask questions, or are we just going to jump in and start throwing punches? Well, I can't throw punches, so uh, ask questions, please. Well, you could throw punches. They just may not be effective punches. Come on, it's almost the same thing. <laughs> So on the like where you're at, there's like a side entrance that leads directly into the dock. <clears throat> it's like uh, a big set of like a big set of double doors. And uh, those six guys are all in the dock, right? Yep. All right. So you guys just want to walk through the open dock? Might as well. <laughs> all right. Let's go. Okay. So. Hold on. Uh, okay, so then my, my map is not like super precise. <clears throat> but so are you guys going to come in like from the front of the trucks? Like the open dock, like where the trucks are parked, you're going to come in that way? Or are you are going to come in the doors that lead onto the dock? Uh, I was thinking we would just like walk through like around the trucks. Yeah. Unless someone else wanted to like go through the other doors. Nah, I think just uh, by the through the trucks is fine. Yeah, let's go through the trucks. Okay. All right. Hold on. Let me switch maps. Get everybody set up here. Coming around. All right. Like I said, the map isn't super precise. I couldn't find a decent one that met all the needs that I needed, but close enough. So this is like, this is like where you guys are at. This is like the dock, right? This is where you would pull in. Um, yeah. Guys are over here, like grabbing, looking through crates, uh, loading them on like pallet jacks or, you know, things that they can use to move certain crates around. You see the guy from the video, he's standing back over here with this, you know, with the big muscular ripped dude. They're kind of talking as the other two guys are kind of off, you know, doing their thing over here. Can I hear what any of them are saying? I do have a extended hearing in this form. Yeah, so you, you hear that the, uh, so the, the guy from the video here, this guy right here, is telling, um, telling his, like, lieutenant, you're assuming, right? The, the big muscular guy, telling that, that, after they um, collect these, there's only one. There's only one more thing left they need um, to complete their devices. It Have they it seen us yet? Well, so like you got to think, right? The docks, like so, like the platform that they're standing on. So like this right here. Think of this area up here. Like once you get past, basically once you get past here, if you look where you're at, Mordecai, this is like this would be like a raised area up here. Um, you guys are coming through, yeah, like that. And then you got to think that this area is sunken down because a truck would back up, right? Trucks several feet tall into the back that goes right into the back of the truck. So I'm assuming you guys are kind of coming in, maybe crouching a little bit, so no, they haven't seen you yet. Okay, cool. So uh, we want to go in and just we want to talk it out first. That's what Amon wants to do. So we wouldn't want to sneak in. That would be too suspicious, right? 
I'm not much of a talker, so if you're if you're going the talking route, then uh, maybe I'll, I'll I'll sneak around, try to get a different angle on them in case uh, things go bad. All right. Well, then I guess Amon should lead. He wants the one that he's the one that wants to talk. So. Oh, okay. There we go. Me? <laughs> yeah. Put him out front. Yeah. Me. That that's really not going going to get to end well. But if it w if if it was that easy, it wouldn't be fun. Okay, let's do it. Come on, Mordecai, let's back him up. All right, lead the way, Pharaoh boy. Just asking, just asking, do you guys have another idea if talking with them fails? Hit them. Uh, hit them. Hit them as many times as it takes. <laughs> Plan B, <laughs> punch them. Talk to them or punch them. I love it. Uh, so simple, but so effective. Okay, let's do this. So I start walking and like, hello, my, my friends. How are you doing? So you kind of, you jump up on the dock. Oh, you got it? Okay. As we approach, I reach out with my mind and I say, we're friends. We come in peace. So they all kind of, like, they turn. This guy kind of comes over here. This guy steps over here. You see then this this person right here steps over here. This guy comes over here. <clears throat> so, you, yeah, you all say, you know, we... What do you say again, Mordecai? Come in peace? So, yeah, I said we, we come to talk with you guys. We come in peace. So, basically, uh, Frostman, this is about as close as you can get. Where I'm at now? Yeah, because I'm assuming you guys see like how I have it dynamically lit. Um, can I maybe uh, get one more to my right? Yeah. You could probably go, yeah, you could probably go one more square forward. Yeah, you can go okay. right there. The, that'll be good. Yeah, he, he got out of voice. It was his time to shine, and he looked. What? He's, <laughs> no, come back to us. That's good. <laughs> plan, plan, plan B, plan, plan Not B. already. <laughs> uh... You didn't really miss anything. Uh, just we walked up, and Mordecai said into their heads directly using his psychic powers that we come in peace. And then they all just kind of turned and looked at us. If you want to start talking, So the guy he's in, the, right? You hear me? Nah, I believe so. Yeah, he shows that he's in the in the, the voice. So this guy steps forward. Obviously, he seems to be in charge. Right. He, he opens his arms. He opens his arms wide. You know, like a like a greeting kind of gesture. Like, my friends, you have come. Greetings. You've come to join us? Are you are you here to help? Uh, well, we got your message this morning. Uh, I say as I push Sunlock out of the way. I'm one out of the way. Um, morning. Yeah, it'll be uh, this evening. This it's evening. The same night. Sorry. What I time do you wake up? <laughs> I got your message this evening. I uh, decided to figure out what uh, what's going on here. Lucky. Like Looks around. Is it an obvious? We're taking what we need. Ah, great, great. Rising up and all that jazz. Uh, what exactly are we doing, though? Well, I want to know so that I, uh, I don't mess anything up. Like he kind of sh shrugs his shoulders a little bit. He kind of sighs. 
And he turns back and he turns turns away and walks away from you. And he stops, turns back around. He's like, are you expecting a villainous monologue? Unfortunately, you will not get one today. Well, we're kind of hoping for a bit of an explanation. I mean, you're asking if we want to help, but we have no idea what you're doing, so. We will be doing what needs to be done. The world must change. And I mean, that's we, very, it's very broad. And we will bring that change. <clears throat> the world has become complacent in its time since supers flew the skies and ran the streets. Uh, there, will be, there will be a time when they will be needed, but they will not be available. We will bring about their return because it will be needed and it will be needed soon. That sounds t- uh, vaguely like a threat. Well, why? What's what's coming? It's like, unfortunately, now is not the time to disclose that. In due time, you will learn. No, that's fine. I guess I'm pretty patient. He, he laughs. He's like, yes, you are. For now. Eventually, you were not. Uh, can you can you talk, Loki? Hey, he's muted. No. I see on his. Oh, but you he hear us. Uh. I guess I uh, kind of look at Mordecai. Um, I don't know, Mordecai, what are you thinking? Well, uh, seems that we're in a bit of a pickle. I get the feeling that uh, that uh, we're getting threatened here, but uh, I don't quite know what to say about this. So, uh, there's been a lot of other superpowered guys popping up around town like an hour after your broadcast. Did you like uh, text them directly or like, like where, where was our memo? He just kind of stares, he cocks his head to the side. He's like, you know, eventually you will be able to think in a broader scale than you do now. At least that's how I remember anyway. It's like, you obviously got the memo. You're here. I kind of like put my, uh, put my hands on my waist. I turn at Mordecai and I say, well, would you look at that? You got us right where he wants us. This guy steps up. Oi, boss. Do we just beat him up now? Finish off what we need to be doing? He puts his hands up to hold the guy. No, not yet. He's like, my last offer. Are you here to help me? Or are you going to stand in my way? Uh... Should we uh, kind of ask a few more questions about what's going on first? Like, we, we brought some coffee with us. We could, like, talk things over over the coffee, you know? Don't like jumping into things without knowing what I'm getting into first, you know? Made that mistake before and uh, wasn't, uh, don't want to make it again. You know what I mean? He laughs. But unfortunately, you do make the same mistake again. Several times. But not to your end. <coughs> uh. Can 
kind of just look at Mordecai. See if he has anything to say. I don't know that I take too kindly to the way he's uh, talking to us. Um, again, uh, it seems like veiled threats. And if he's the one that's behind all this, obviously he doesn't care for the average citizen. He'll toss us away when he uh, when he's finished with us. Well, I don't think it's fair to jump to conclusions like that, but... And then I'm just going to just drop a smoke bomb. Oh, I got my... Wait, wait. I got my stuff here. Where is it? I got my... Yeah. I paid for these effects. Wow. I think that's like even the rights. Is it though? It's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's close. This is as big as it goes. So, it's a little but, short, but yeah. All right. So you drop a smoke ball. So you're obscuring yourself, this guy, uh, Mordecai and Amon. Yeah. Uh, Loki can hear us, right? You should. And now I can talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Hey, welcome back. That's just... All right, so you drop your smoke ball, so I guess we're just going to go then... We're going to go into... Yep. Initiative, just to get it done. Let me hold on. Let me let me reset. Okay. Whoa! Roll that twenty. <coughs> Where's the initiative on the sheet again? It's uh, under your defenses. Ah, thank you. Um, let's see. And then... Man, I'm always so slow. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't have an initiative bonus. This guy, that turn. Where to go? There he is. And then that turn. All right, Frostring. So, uh, you up here? I got a quick question. Now that our lives are in danger, mm -hmm. uh, do I get a hero point for doing my complication and protecting my bike from before? Sure. Okay. Are these anything on the map? These things? Uh, they're just like crates, uh, containers. Okay. So. Obviously, I could I could hear the conversation, and I heard and see the smoke bomb, and know that it's a it, it is now Plan B. Punch them. Yep. So I'm gonna jump uh, from where I am through the air and land right here, and then just do an ice breath all this way in a cone. Okay. How wide of a cone will it? Can you hit everybody with it? It's sixty feet, uh, or sixty feet long. I don't really know how wide that would be. I think it ends but, up at like thirty feet at the end, right? Yeah, so essentially, mostly I, I'm fine with not hitting that guy as long as I get like these uh, five right here, kind of just blast it this way. 
get these five. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. So we get a they get a dodge resistance. There's a fortitude uh, resistance. <coughs> I have the uh, alternate resistance. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. All right. So wait, so you're, you're gonna hit this guy? He's five right here. One, two, three, five, but not okay. So fortitude, you said, right? No, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So how does this work? They do a four to save and then a toughness check, or Dude, it's just fortitude. Cause this is let me look at your sheet again here. Oh wait, pro yeah, probably it is the dodge, and if they fail, or no, because there's no attack roll. It's just uh. Well, it's if it's area. if it's an area, then yeah, they, get they get a dodge. Yeah, they get a dodge, and then if they fail, to to avoid some of the effect. Um, a, a, a successful resistance check reduces the area effect uh, to half its normal rank against the target rounded down to a minimum rank of one. But you took alternate resistance. So I check as needed. This effect simply fills the designated area based on the type modifier. And then it's, that's under your, that's your, let me find your werewolf thing. There it is, ice breath. <coughs> Damage five. Yeah, okay. So then, so they get their, so that would be their dodges. 10 plus the effect rank is five, so 15K. And then, then the ice fortitude. Uh, let's see, we'll give it this guy, oh God. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So you you breathe on these five guys. Um, these three dudes here go down. Let me put my let me put my little K here. There we go. Yeah. yeah. These frostfang leave some for us. I I say that in character. Triple kill. Yeah, you just like whoa, you just like breathe on them or whatever. These guys, the 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 crony dudes, basically the like minions. <coughs> they kind of uh, just like they like whoa. And that's my turn. Okay. All right, punch. You're up. I'm gonna step up to this guy. Uh, he's a minion, right? Yeah. All right, so I could just routine check to hit him, right? Yep. All right, so I'm just going to do that. So a 17 to hit him. 17 to hit him. Okay. Then, so he's got parry. <clears throat> nope, you hit him. Uh, by, uh, do I get any raises on it? Because it's multi-attack. Um, what is so uh, the multi-attack? Which if I, if I uh, get two raises on him, so if I hit him by ten or more, then it does two more damage. Yeah. And if I hit him yeah. by fifteen you, or more, yeah, you do, do. Uh, yeah, you get the you get the plus two. All right, uh, so that's five damage. So a twenty toughness check. Oh, oh my God! So many ones. All right, so you just like you come over there, just like you just clobber this dude in the face. He just goes down like a sack of potatoes. Nice. All right, Mordecai, you're up. 
All right, so as a free action, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull up my my ward. So I etch some symbols on with my left hand, and uh, uh, kind of shining shield pops up around me. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I guess just mystic blast this guy right here. Okay. Oh. Nice. Is that a crit? Yeah, it's a crit, isn't it? Yeah, you rolled a 20. And what's the... What, and then, what's the damage of that, normally? Is it a 5? I think it's a 5, yeah, that's what we established last time. Because there's several things you can do with a crit. Let me find it again. Uh, I got him up, do you want me to read him off? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I had that sheet, it just, I forgot to open it up, but I got it right here. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you could increase the effect by making it plus five, so it would do five more damage. You can add an effect uh, with a DC of 10 or a DC of 15 for a damage effect. Or you could just do an alternate effect and make it do something completely different, as if you're using extra, your uh, extra effort to do a power stunt. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and do the plus five to the damage. Plus five? Okay. Yep. So it's in total of 25. All right. <coughs> Look at the chart. It is a nice square shot right in the face. Looping. Damn it. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you like you like hit him like right in the face. Just boom. He like steps back. He like he like turns. He like shakes his head. He's like, he doesn't look too happy now. He's going to. He's gonna rush over here. And so he'll like come like this and then like this. Boom. More guy's gonna punch you in the face. So you get a parry. Good thing he's in the smoke. Do I get a? Uh, it's plus five to dodge, isn't it? My uh, my ward, or is it plus five to parry? Oh, you're. Let me look at your sheet. Because it's uh, your ward is a protection ability, isn't it? Uh, protection sustained. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it's going to be toughness. Protection as to toughness. Oh, okay. So Perry, so he does still hit you. And then, so then you roll your, um, sorry, your ward bonus. What is that, a plus five? Yeah. So you get that plus your normal toughness. It should be, it should, honestly, it should all equal out to five, because technically you get, unless you have, hold on, let me just look at your sheet. There you are. Okay, yeah, that's the miscellaneous. So yeah, you just have a toughness, toughness of five, so go ahead and roll that. Good luck. Oh. Thanks. So, let's see. So he like punches you, but you like you get your your ward up. He just his fist like slams into your ward, <clears throat> and you're able to deflect the blow. Nice. Okay. All right, I'm on. You're up. Okay. So I'm going to do, I think the, the easiest, the smartest thing to do. So. He's going to rush the boss. Yes. Mm 
There you go. He's still in the smoke. Don't don't leave the smoke and get punched in the face, please. Uh, I I'll try not to to leave the smoke. However, I'll be pointing <coughs> to him while my eye glows and I was like, you 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 think you you think you are God, but you're not. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're messing with. I will show you. I will show you the real truth. And I will try to demoralize him because I have an idea, but I think I will save that for later. Okay. Is that using your deception, correct? Uh, I think I or is it, think so. I, gotta, I don't know, so I'm remember how this works. Or is it the one where I have to roll? It's happening to play for two weeks. No, no. Uh, let me see. Oh, there uh, it is. No. Demoralize. Yeah. Normally, you you use intimidation, right? But in my case, I will use. I can use um, deception if I if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think that's what you've got it set up as. Sure. You should taunt. Yeah, taunt. Yeah, can you use deception? Oh, yeah. And I will use my assessment. Basically, I wrote insight against his deception. That's, that's, there's that, too. Oh, yeah, you're gonna assess. Let's assess the situation, and then. Yeah, that's the one where I have to roll. Oh, man. Sometimes I'm just. Let's see. Just want, want to do this. Make a secret insight do. check for you. What is your insight bonus? My insight. Side is two. That's so solo. Oh, wow. And here, my deception roll. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, oh man. This is opposed <clears throat> by his insight or his will. Uh, I think I'm going to use my hero point to reroll that. Okay. Oh, please, please work. Please work. Uh, I, oh, wait. I rolled a 6, so it's a 16. So... So it's a 19. Oh, yeah. Much better. 19? Okay. Yeah. All right, so you shot at him. I tip to demoralize him. Well, under that helmet, you can't quite tell if it worked. Uh, your assessment, you wait. Don't, I, I can't. I can't see through his helmet, even with my no. penetrating vision. Oh man! Correct. He, you cannot. He's there's, good. there's something on. There's something on the inside that's blocking it. Hmm. Oh, no. This man. This man. He's different. Hmm. Maybe I underestimate him. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, and your assessment, you gain. Because then, what is it? it let's see. Let me tell you exactly what you get. So, um, well, I mean, honestly, like looking at him, it doesn't look very opposing or very imposing. So, he could be weak. He might just be smart. And people follow him. Hmm. Oh, nice. Maybe what I have planned may work. I hope. Okay, so that's the end of my turn. Okay. All right. He's, uh... So now it's the, the boss guy staring at the guy with the helmet. Like, he like he looks at you as like, My old friend, I came prepared for you. But then he walks away. Backs over here to one of these crates that they were, that they were gathering up. And he uses like so basically he like puts his hand at it and like the, the crate begins to levitate. And he walks this way with it. And like the crate's like following behind him. Alright, Frostfang, you're up. Um Quickly shout out to Mordecai and Punch Drunk and uh, just see if they've, they, they've got that guy, right? <laughs> kind of like stick my hand out from the smoke. You guys see it's uh, in a thumbs up. Affirmative friend. I'll take care of this. 
I'm going right in then. I'm going to leap off of the top of this thing. And uh, I'm going to try and land uh, right about here. Okay. And then I give him some of this. Key, y'all? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, here's Perry. Whoa. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my look control. No man, a little bit to the left. <laughs> so does that give him like a reroll? Yep. Oh, much better. All right, all right. Well, so like you land, like you go to swipe, he just kind of brings up the right arm to, to attempt to block, um, but then. Amon shouts at you, and you're able to quickly change direction, and you score a hit. And then... But you're like, your claw just like rakes across his, his armor. You just, <laughs> sparks go flying off in one direction, but you can't see any visible damage. That's it for me. All right, punch drunk, you're up. Hmm... Hmm. I guess yeah. I'm gonna punch this this muscle man right next to me. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do a defensive attack. So I'm gonna take out uh, five points for my attack roll. Mm -hmm. Put five. Uh, get five points for my active defenses. So I'm just gonna. Yeah, so that's uh, I edited it, so that's that's a good result. That's the right result. Okay. Thirteen. Oh, well, you hit him. Um, eighteen. With any uh degrees of success? No. Okay. Um, well, I mean, like you had like the one, but you didn't get the two to get the extra. Yeah. Just enough, you like you catch him like just in an in an odd place. What like his like, butt? Yeah, punch him right in the ass. Well, you, you kind of like he comes in, like you kind of get him in like in the side of the jaw or whatever. You try to make you slip the hand right in there. Yeah. Just boom, catch him right in the jaw. He's like, he just snaps his head to the side for a second, then he's like, mm -hmm. all right, Mordecai, you're up. Okay. Um, is this like 5e? Would I take an attack of opportunity if I walk away from him? No. No. I'm going to head down here and I'm going to keep my assist, my protection sustained as a free action and uh, hit him again with the Mystic Blast. Okay. Is the smoke gone now or no? Uh, because wasn't it usually well, it, it's it, your turn? It yeah, it lasts. It it lingers for a turn, but I don't know if you want to count it since I technically dropped it before com a combat started. You know. Well, I would have been. I would have. I would have put it like right at the top of the turn of the first turn. So basically now, because uh, Frostfang went first at the top of the turn. So then I gave you the whole first turn. I let it go, and then is it at the? It would have been at the end of your turn on the second turn that it dissipates. All right. So it's still up now. That's that, that's normally how it goes, right? To say, combat starts, you drop it at the end of your second turn. It dissipates, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So it's gone now. Okay. Oh, you rolled a six. Get him. Rip. Okay. Yeah, he's able to dodge out of the way. <clears throat> You're like, and he just, 
It, like, it goes over his shoulder, and then punch, you see it coming, and you're like, oh my god. Kind of matrix. Dodge it. Bend backwards <laughs> you're like, completely. You're like, Bruh. then the dude just like kicks you. <laughs> Alright, so he's gonna he's gonna punch you. Ah. He, he's gonna be like, like, let me show you how it's done. He's gonna give you like a flurry of blows. Go. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Fant even all right. Fantastic. So he comes in. He throws several punches. You're just able to just <laughs> block them all. Thanks. All right, Amon, you're up. Yeah, I'm waiting. When are you gonna show me? He's like, mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, please, please work, please. So I'm going to ch charge him. Uh, not in the little of sense, okay, just to move up. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, you gonna bull rush him? Uh, no, not, not like this. I'm just going to do these. <laughs> and I'm going to use extra effort so I can power stunt, baby. Okay. So, okay, this is gonna be, I don't know if I have the points to do this, but I actually want to make a, uh, an, uh, rank 10 affliction. But since I don't know if I can pull off uh, all 10 ranks, I want to make it uh, touch, uh, t grapple, grapple base. That, that, that's the, the thing, I don't know. Gra grab base, I think that is Oh, Oh, forget it. Uh, I'll, I'll do it ranged. I think I have the, the points. Basically, what I'm trying to do is to project uh, to, uh, how can I say? To overcharge his, his senses with my uh, uh, with my all-seeing eye, you know, like make him see what I see, but in a more or in a in in, control, in a uncontrollable way, something like that. Okay. Re really overwhelm him with the with the, the the vision of the truth, you know. So let's see if I can do this. Please, dice, help me. Uh, let me go to my sheet. Yeah, I have some bonus. No bonus. Oh boy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna roll a d20. Okay. So let's see if it hits. Oh boy. Oh, man. How many uh, points does your eye cost? Fourteen. Okay. You get a twelve. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> and this is a this is an affliction. Yep. And then, can you change it like its resistance or whatever, or is it just base? I would like to make it base on will. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, I think I'm going to use my last luck point and uh, re-roll this. Please, okay. bro, good. Please, please. Here comes that one. Oh! Okay. It wasn't a crit, but better than nothing. So is that a 19 total? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. And then he just makes his will save, you said? The will resistance. And what's the what's the DC of this effect? So I made it a, a ten effect. So it's twenty because it's inflation rate plus ten. Okay. Yep. All right. So and it's like a so like what you have to like grab him. Is that what you do or? Uh, if it's just an affliction. It's just an attack roll, which I was. Guessing. Yeah, well, yeah, because like, because like it's like it's a it's a close attack, so yeah. I didn't know. So basically, so yeah. you 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 run I, up I need there. To and him. You, okay, so you you run up there, you you grab him, put your hand on him, and you send all of your all your power into him, try to overwhelm his senses, but he doesn't seem to be affected. He just kind of like looks down at you because he's a little taller than you are. 
Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to put that out there. I'm trying to delete it. <laughs> You're good. Okay. You're stronger it? than I thought. <laughs> and I'm going to use assessment again. Because, yeah, I, I, I'm like that. Okay, your insight's plus two. Yep. Okay. And this is modified by his deception. Oh, wait. Um, this guy actually appears to be relatively weak physically. You see how Frostfang was able to, to hit him with little effort? Man. It appears to his that his, like, maybe his. His parry is really low. Okay. But man, does he have a strong mind, man? And that's the end of my turn. Okay. So he's like looking down at you. And like you kind of look up at him. And you're like, you're worried here for a second. It's like, my friend, you were so weak. I can't remember a time when you were so worry not things will change we see that you know he, he's got these he, the crates follow him he like raises his hand and it begins to glow and then like this the glow like envelops him as well and he's just like teleports with the crate over here like a big flash of light you guys kind of flinch and you look and he's gone and he's standing over there he's like he uses levitation to put the crate in the truck all right frostfang you're up Where's the truck at? This truck is basically like, it's it's in this area right here. Like I said, this map is not 100% correct. I couldn't find one that fit my exact needs, uh, but the truck is in this area. Like this is like the loading zone area. Basically just to picture him, he's standing at the back of a truck. You wanna like zone. draw a square like, there and call it a truck? Okay, hold on. Okay, I want to go by, um, I'm on here, and then I'm going to leap over the crates, mm -hmm. land right here, and then I want to do this to the truck's tires. Okay. Nice. So that's a hit. I guess it's a stationary target. And then we'll give them we'll give the tires some Alright. And as I do so, that, I wanna look at them and I say I don't wanna say, My friend, are you are you leaving so soon? He looks like he kinda of like cocks his head like he's annoyed. <coughs> so yeah, you're able to slash the tires. And then that's it. I punched drunk, you're up. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm going to. Yeah. I want to step over here. So if Mordecai misses again, I don't have to worry about that. And then I'm going to drop another smoke bomb where I'm at. Okay. That'll be my turn. All right, Mordecai. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, can I ask? Can I shout at the uh, uh, Frostfang there and be like, "Hey, should I take care of him or should I focus on Meathead over there?" Uh, I'm gonna reply that seems like this guy has something uh, of real importance. He's trying to get out of here quick. Whatever is in this crate seems to be his main objective. Gotcha. Uh, I'll tell, so I'm going to turn and um, I'm going to try and do a Mystic Blast on him. Okay. Good luck, sir. Roll well. May the dice be with you. Uh, 
that right? So you shoot your Mystic Black, he, he, Blast, he just kind of like ducks forward and just goes whoosh, over his shoulder into the ceiling. He just like slaps you, whoosh, and there you go. We're like, rip, need one more for Friday's group. Think, think positively. I think he's the big bad evil guy and uh, we knock him out and Ryan has nothing left for us for the rest of the campaign because we killed the bad guy already. You guys can go help Thursday's group yeah. <laughs> deal, with, deal with whatever their problems are. <clears throat> All right. All right, so I guess the, the big meathead, he's going he's gonna to try to show you what for again. I love rolling ones. <laughs> I rolled a one. <clears throat> He's just like swinging in the in the smoke. He's like, "Where are you, coward?" All right, I'm on. You're up. Oh boy. Okay. I didn't. Uh, I wasn't waiting for this. So I, I can just move half my speed now. So. Uh, let, 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 let me check a little thing. Okay. I'm going to go here. Oh, no, not here. Here. I'll punch this. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, all, yeah all, 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 the, all the other four guys are down. Oh, yeah. So I'll just be here, like, and I'll try to shout out to the, to the big evil dude that just resisted my powers. Like, how, what do you mean when you say... I don't remember you being so weak. How the heck? How do you know me? On his turn, he just, like, he turns and he looks at you. He doesn't say anything. But he, like, he, like, raises his hand. And it begins to glow that, that energy color again. And then he, like, he starts to glow purple. I think, is that what I said? Purple? Like, this purplish color. So does the truck. The big meathead guy and the four dudes that are incapacitated. He's, then he just kind of he like closes his hand. Then they all just kind of whoosh, they all kind of teleport away. And like why when he was going to do this, I, I just I was like uh, standing my hand in front of him. I was like, ah, I feel. Then I I was seat and like look down like. I mean, I feel so, so, so useless. And I couldn't do nothing. I, I put all I had in, into him. And he, he just shrugged it off. Oh. Don't worry, I'm on. It's not that you're weak. He was clearly just toying with us. He could have left and took everything with him at any time. But he chose to, he just chose to fight us. Yeah, I don't but, know why. Uh, you all, you guys did all the hard work here, huh? and I didn't do nothing. But what really, what really ticks me off is that he, he talked like he, he knew me from before, but I don't remember meeting him. Oh man, this is getting odd, odd and odder. Oh man. Maybe that's why he's mad at you. So you're, he remembers you, but you don't remember him. Yeah, you know, that's a little awkward, you know. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, it was like your best buddy from high school. You don't remember him? Shame on you, man. That's what Facebook's for, right? Or Twitter and all that. Sorry, uh, I I don't use those social network stuff. I, I like the my my old my my old letters, you know. The old school is pen pals and all that stuff. Oh yeah. All right, so you guys are left alone in this warehouse. 
What is the next step? Yeah. I feel like all of us are having trouble adopting to all this new technology, huh? Um. <clears throat> Anyways, let's yeah, uh, yeah, let's I'm poke around sure. a bit. Yeah, I'm not even sure now. Uh, he kind of just you would think if he needed anything else, he would have t- taken it with him. So I'm not sure what else we could uh, find here, but I guess we can uh, start looking around. Um, hey, Mordecai, why don't you uh? uh search the area for him because i'm thinking if he could teleport and bring all that stuff with him why would he need the cars unless the distance he could go is limited you know uh sure sure i'll uh, try scrying for him (laughs) so if i uh, etch some cuneiform symbols into the air and they start to glow and once again my eyes turn white as i extend outward my uh, my vision outward what do I see? And while he does that, I'm going to set up my drone. Kind of double our chances of finding him if we can. Okay. So Mordecai, you stretch out with your sight. Um, you're not able to locate the individual. I Let's look see. at the uh, look at range. Punch Trunk and say, uh, "Well, he's gone further than 16 miles. I don't know how much luck you'll find him with that drone." Mm-hmm. You searched the whole area already? My my never touched his presence with my mind. All right. I guess I'll still give it a search then. Okay. I guess you can roll your drone's perception. It has dark vision if that helps at all. Yeah. Um, you don't you don't find any sign of the trucks with the drone in the immediate vicinity, you know, several miles or whatever or whatever is you know kind of able to see. Um, no sign of his goons or anything. <clears throat> Wherever he's gone, he's gone further away than you guys are able to see. Hmm. And you guys want to search around the warehouse? Yeah, I'd be yeah. doing that when. Uh, okay, you want to make a. Let's see, do you, do you have investigation? Yeah. There's a lot of there's, yeah. Go ahead and roll that. There's a lot of information laying around in here. Basically, similar over there, right? You know, packing manifests and all this other stuff. <clears throat> well, with the 13, you're able to gain you know access to one of the offices, kind of like at the other warehouse that have like. They have like uh, inventory. This is a smaller warehouse than the other one. Um, this one deals more with like spe- specific types of equipment for specific types of um, machines. If you're able to get a hold of like the like the inventory manifest of the whole um, warehouse. It's not as exhaustive as the other one. It's something you can take with you. Okay. Anybody doing anything else? I guess not. Okay. All right. So after here, where do you guys plan to go? Because now it's probably getting 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock. Uh, it's starting to get late. You guys are getting so, tired. So, John, are you taking that inventory book with you? Uh, I mean, I probably wouldn't make much of it. So, uh, I mean, I guess I'll hand it to you. Hmm. I didn't know what the oh. last one meant, so I probably don't know what this one means. Uh, I say we take this with us then. We could chill out in my garage. I was about to say, yeah, we pretty... need somewhere to crash because last place got, uh, you know, 
sealed up. I keep it low key, so I don't think anyone will be able to find us there. Uh, I can look through this when we get back. Um, for now, might as well even just call the SPD and tell them that there was a superhero fight here. Maybe they'll find something on their own. <laughs> you know? Okay. Do you make the call? Yeah. All right. So you, you call in an anonymous tip to the SPD hotline? Yep. <clears throat> you can't, can't track my phone, so. Okay. So you guys decide to head back to Punch Drunk's Garage. All right, gamers. So that was the second session for the Friday game group of the Mutants and Masterminds campaign for Days Long Gone that I've been running. Um, it, I try to make it as long as I could. Um, not feeling super well. So uh, hopefully that won't be an issue. Um, but we'll see how it goes over the next few days. Um, I hope you folks enjoyed this. Um, if you did, hit the like button. If you want to support my channel, hit my subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get instant notifications when I upload new content. Um, also, um, join me over on Discord with the players that are in both groups and a lot of others that have come over um, looking for knowledge on games or bringing knowledge uh, to the server of other other game systems and Mutants and Masterminds and all that kind of stuff. There's people looking for game groups either to join or to start. So if you're looking to get a game in using Roll20 or whatever uh, medium you like to use, there might be somebody over there willing to set something up for you. So stay tuned for the next session of this to continue on this story. I'm kind of excited to see where the story is going to go and how the players are going to progress. But until then, until I see you again in the dungeon, I'm Brian, your Game Master, and happy gaming.